By request of multiple guests and visitors, he took out his uh, guitar. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, thank you all who is already in. Uh, it's amazing you guys are here already. Uh, and uh, we are going to have amazing guests tonight. Uh, some are going to be surprise guests and some are going to be... Um, uh, the ones that you know, uh, like uh, Rick from the Cornife Network is going to play his box, the box. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Mil Hillman Mower, uh, he's feeling much better tonight. He's going to be joining us live as well. Uh, Rosorian Buck is going to be on, and we have a few surprise guests as well. So don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. There's going to be lots of talk about music. Uh, if you want to join in the conversation in the chat room, uh, ask a question our guests uh, let's do that then drop a question in the chat room and before you do that go and tweet this stream out tell everybody tell everybody how great it is <laughs> how exciting it's gonna be we are excited hope you are excited too Oh, and now I see a chat. <laughs> there, you uh, there you go. So hi, and a shout out to all you guys already out there. Oh my God, uh, there's so many of you. Uh, Train Man, our mod, uh, hi and hello. Um, and uh, Railroad Preserver is on, and uh, I lost the chat for a minute. I'll bring you up the chat. <laughs> there. Okay. I don't like being here, it's like sitting in the passenger seat. Uh, yeah, I will have to change, I think, for a yeah. second there. Um, okay, and uh, Reese's Mill Off uh, Road Adventure. Hi and hello. Uh, Rizorian Buck, hey, you're one of our guests. Uh, welcome. And uh, Fast CSX is in. Hello. Uh, Nathan likes drums. Hi, uh, Nathan, we need you uh, to tweet us or message us somewhere so we can tweet you a link so you can get on because I was trying to get in contact with you but uh, you are very secret <laughs> you're a big secret so can you please message us so we can uh, get you a link please um, Carol Emerson hi DJ Creamy you made it good perfect thank you so much best friend in your thread hi Stephanie um, this natural journey is in uh, within hiking distance is in high uh tyrell terrell butterfly brook brook hi uh, you're gonna be rooting for rick i assume <laughs> uh 
uh, AOK Foraging and Adventures. Uh, hi. Uh, welcome. Early. Are we early? No, we're not early. Uh, Okay, can you guess see if you're commenting to them? I uh, guess is gonna see once if you put their uh, their handle in the same as you just did with our at Pushy Studios. Well, the same thing with their name in the front, and it's gonna highlight an orange color for them as well. So uh, do that, and uh, they're gonna be able to see it. I'm gonna try and mod the chat as well. Uh, uh, when we have multiple guests, so I don't miss questions. Uh, so if I miss any, just copy paste it again and address it to me uh, because it's gonna be easier to see because it's orange. You're doing good though. Just listen. I'm doing good. I like it. <laughs> okay. Um, You're always scared to give the wheel over to the wife until she is driving. You realize how relaxing it is in the passenger seat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, I'm not driving. Uh, well, well, while we're gathering our guests together and starting off our Monday, manic Monday live stream, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you about our weather tonight. Uh, it's freezing rain. It's ice. The branches Sucks. were, yeah, the branches were all ice cold and covered with ice, like literally with ice. School work was canceled all across Montreal. So we finally got uh, hit with that nasty weather too. So uh, let's hope and fingers crossed that it's not gonna affect our electricity as it did for some of our uh, visitors yesterday. We had a few of the people yesterday in the chat who actually had to drop out because they lost electricity, unfortunately, but that's a dedication. They stayed there to the last minute. There was one person that had their basement flooded and they're cleaning it out while they were listening to our live stream. That's also a dedication. That's amazing. We got great fans. We have great fans with great supporters. You have great supporters. We're all in it together, right? Um, uh, railroad. Uh, we'll, uh, yeah, we have already a few people lined up. Uh, so then uh, we'll, yeah. we'll see how it will go on. And then if, then yeah. if something uh, is going to line up, uh, I'll let you know. Okay? If not, we can do it uh, another stream. We do go live now every day from 8 to 10 p.m. Just a quick uh, reminder, tomorrow we're going to have a Tuesday Tech Talk. Uh, first hour actually is going to be de devoted to our special guest and very fun guest. Uh, lots of colors and fun. Yes. And, that, yeah. that one. and uh, uh, tomorrow, uh, the second hour is going to be our usual Tuesday tech uh, questions, anything and everything about uh, video, photo editing, social media, graphic design, any mini tutorials. If you have any questions ahead, DM me those or uh, just uh, come by at 8 p.m. and uh, join the chat and we'll try to help each other tomorrow's together. gonna be a guest that a lot of you guys have seen a lot of you commented and never probably expected to see it on a stream I must say it was a hard uh, not hard not, not to, to crack, crack yeah. because uh, uh, this a guest haven't been live I uh, haven't been on the streams as a guest um, mm -hmm. and you all know and pretty unique compared to a lot of channels. Yes. Even for YouTube, is very unique to begin a with. Very unique uh, yeah. theme in the channel, and it uh, it uh, took a little bit of convincing because they wanted to be on the stream, but they were not used to being live. So, uh, but right. uh, I think we have uh, been doing pretty good job. Tap on the shoulder for yeah, those who are shy. Uh, there have been a couple guests already who were shy at the beginning, but I think they enjoyed it afterwards. So, uh, I think. Uh, this is gonna happen the same as our guests tomorrow. So it is gonna be cool. Yeah, uh, and yeah, uh, that one. I mean the rest of the week is just full with amazing, amazing guests. So it's gonna be exciting, and we're starting off our week with amazing manic Monday music night. Uh, happy trails hiking. Hello and hi, Nathan. We're still waiting for your awesome email or tweet. I love this guitar. This guitar is a way better than the other one, even though it's the Can exact we show same what model. You're playing? Yeah. They got my RGX 521. This is my always was my favorite guitar when I was younger. Bought another one. And see right there. Now I think we're gonna move the microphone out of the way. That would be good. And there's the blue. So I have the twins. Because anybody who knows that I have a Floyd walking whammy, which means the strings are locked in with an Allen key. And it's a real pain to tune, especially if you want to change and uh, drop in a half step in tuning. So 
Now with both, I don't have to bother with that. So but I like the black one. The black one's got better action on it. Now, honey, how many uh, guitars do you have all together? Four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and two are twins. <laughs> but they serve a different purpose. So, <laughs> As you can see, I haven't played in a long time. And for you who play guitar or don't play guitar, that's what your fingers look like. Just after touching it for 20 minutes after months so until callus has come back it definitely is not the funnest feeling in the world <laughs> Uh, we're just uh, solving out some issues with our yeah. guest here, uh, so just don't go anywhere. Um, technical difficulties, like anytime you have music, there's always technical difficulties. Xenia's just sending the link off. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who are in the chat and are going to be our guests, just send the link right now. Nathan. I had to bend the strings. I forgot. I always leave these out, but it's not very good when we're sitting this close. I want to poke your eye out. It just <laughs> wouldn't make for a very good live stream. I think one of these times we're going to finally end up in 911 live streaming because. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're pushing we're the envelope gonna... every time. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome, guys. <laughs> yes, Nathan, I know you don't have Twitter. What do you have that we can send you a link on? <laughs> Sounds great and designed. Just dropping by to show support and hit the thumbs up. You're welcome. Yay. Thank you so much. 1 14 a.m. here. Well, oh my thank god. you, my god. Uh, thank you. That is really appreciated. I. So Do you glad. have email, Nathan? Okay. Um, okay, let's try that. Uh, okay, so we're uh, we're uh, waiting for our guests to join. Uh, we have one coming in. Uh, just a second. I'm not being used to uh, to be at the wheels. Okay, one coming in. Resorian Bach, are you in? Oh, there we go. Uh, that's, uh, I think that's Rick. Do I have I to think it, yeah, that is. Welcome, Rick. Hello. How are you? Wonderful. I, I, I'm trying to get this set up with... Uh, how I'm going, I have a laptop on the floor, a camera on the table, and a um, microphone in this. <laughs> yeah, that is a bit of a predicament, isn't it? it it's, it's an unusual situation. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're an unusual channel, so you'll... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, if this, I, I recorded like this on, um, oh, what was it, Friday? For the show for Sunday, and... Um, so I tested it out then, and it seems to be working, I guess. You can hear me, and I can hear you guys through the headphones, so it's, it's all. I think we're on the right track, my friend. Yes, we definitely are. I've got to talk to the – talk to the. Uh, I'm, I've got you on the computer screen down here, but you're actually on that camera right there. So oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> you really kind of got like a – what do you call that there? Where you rub your stomach and tap your head thing going. Like, yes. <laughs> oh, there, there he's got – I can do it. No, i got to rub my stomach and tap – that's right. Rub and tap. There you uh, go. I, I think I did it. I don't know. I think you had it. <laughs> I could, I could, I could tap my stomach and rub my head. 
<laughs> Versatile. <laughs> we make it work. I love that shirt, though. Yeah. Well, thank you. What does it say? Uh, it's wish Coffee. Oh. Because I, uh, I, I am always, uh, one thing about, you know, I'm always drinking coffee. Right. Constantly. Constantly. So, um, I had a friend who got me some Death Wish coffee in a cup last two Christmases ago. So it was kind of a cool shirt. I just decided to wear it. Yeah, I love it. Love it. <laughs> it's really cool, actually. Yeah, and for Thank those you. of you who don't know, and probably there's just few of those who don't, yeah, uh, this few. is Rick from the Core Life Network. Uh, One of the alumni. Yes. Uh, we all started. That's right. And we had Rick and uh, his wife to be broke uh, on our guest uh, as our guest as well on our live stream. I'm going to be dropping the link to their channel as well shortly and repeating that throughout our live stream too. Definitely, definitely. And so glad you could come with us tonight. Do you want to talk a little bit about what you're playing? Because I, sure. I, yeah, that would be great. Sure. I'll lift it up and I'll show you. This is, um, let me see if I, how I'm doing. This is a uh, Cajon by Sila. Sila is a company out of Germany. You can't even buy them in the United States. I kind of got lucky with someone sending me one. Okay. Um, and uh, it's a box. The original yeah. original cajon uh, had no snares. So uh, actually, see, this has the snare set. It's kind of the, this is more of a modern setup. The right. original the original cajon was um literally means box. Cajon yeah. means box. So um, the African the uh, Peruvian Af Af African slaves um, came over to Peru. And um, they weren't allowed because of the Christian thing going on there that to play their drums. They thought it was part of a religious ceremony. So, and so they could still do it. They decided to start playing on boxes or drawers. And so originally the sound was really simple. It was, um, well, it's never been simple. Yeah. <laughs> it, it can't imagine with a box, but oh, it gave nice. tongs without the snare sound. Um, other musics that use it, uh, other musical stuff that use it, flamenco, um, kind of any Latin percussion you'll see, or even in, in, in um, Arabic countries are using it as well. Yes, um, that's you, through you Turkey and everywhere as right, well. Right. I, I, a lot of the people I follow, there's a, uh, there's a guy named Daddy Bahami. It's really good. I mean, I don't even, I'm not even on the same scale as Daddy, but yeah. um, he, uh, he's an amazing player. And then there's a guy that I learned from online a uh, name ross mccollum it's cajon groove guide okay and um if you want to learn to play that there's play the cajon it, it it's really not that hard i mean i have some experience because i had this here too um i uh i'm a rudimental marching percussionist so um that was my original thing so oh wow you got some pretty nice jobs here my friend Thank you. I'm actually not playing my best because I'm not warmed up. But, um, yeah, I, I learned to do this first. I started playing this um, about the snare drum thingy my, my freshman year of high school. Okay. Um, I started doing this, and then, you know, just I played on a drum line, and I played on in a drum bugle core off the way, out of the West Coast for a couple of years. Um, and about five years ago, I ran into this box. And um, this thing changed my life. It, you can actually make with the new modern cajons with the snares. Um, and, and the flamenco one, I should mention, doesn't actually have snares. It has guitar strings running down the inside of it. Oh. So it gives a more a different kind of sound. Right. But, but this one um, allows you to actually add a cymbal or a hi-hat, and you've got a whole entire drum set. They've even got pedals for these things, so you can play them like a bass drum. I kind of like playing it with my hands, but that's really um, cool. Yeah, it's it's fun because you know it's new to the Americas. The rest yeah. of the world has been playing this for, you know, I mean, you look at Europe. Europe's huge. They've got hundreds of cajon manufacturers in Europe. Right. In the United States is just starting to catch on. So, yeah. um, you know, now, now we look at this as uh, an instrument that's new on the rise. And I feel pretty lucky because. Um, I got into it early. Cool. Sorry, we're just going to welcome our newest guest that just joined us, Rosorian Buck. Welcome. Hey, man. Nice to see you. How's it going? Good. Can you guys hear me and all that? Can you yeah, hear me? Yeah, we can see you on. Hear you. All just right. 
And you have Rick with you from the Corn Life Network is joining you? Right on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, this is the very first time I've ever done uh, anything on anyone else's channel. So this is all new oh. to me. Yeah. yeah. Well, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. That's uh, glad it's um, an honor. I, so happy to be here. You <laughs> oh, no, it's an honor to be here. Oh, I'm glad. Sorry, I cut Rick off. I'll just, I, was, I let him finish. I felt so bad about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's okay. No, go ahead. Because I want to ask you a question about it. Like, we sold them with Pearl, but I don't uh -huh. remember them ever having us like a snare attachment. This this is kind of a the, – the snares on a lot of them, like my right. first one was an LP. Right. And, and um, the snares were glued – well, basically attached to the inside of the front, pet, front – um, a playing surface. Okay. You really couldn't turn them on or off. This this is a, a proprietary system by Sela, so that you can actually remove the snare and then add it back in again. Oh, cool! So you can, you can get the traditional Peruvian sound out of it, or you can get a modern snare sound out of it. So it's, oh. um, I mean, it's seriously, it's it's simple. I mean, you can play, um, I mean, you can play anything on this, and and it 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 fills in for a drum set. You see, when we made the catalogs for Pearl, like of course everybody was excited for the new uh, Master series. That yeah. we paid thirty five hundred. Uh, the Master Customs thirty five hundred bucks just for a snare drum. And a side note: one guy, one time, you could pick any color you wanted. One time, a guy sent in a swatch of his cat's hair. Are you serious? He wanted a five piece kit. The bass drum alone was thirty five hundred. Like everybody else, you could pick all your wraps. You could pick how many, you know, so many maples, so many birch. And he sent in a swatch of his cat hair to match. <laughs> so that's yeah funny. when it's masters you pretty much get your own way that's true that's true i you know i have i have never ever really been a drum set player mm -hmm. um and uh so i like this because this is great for acoustic settings like coffee shops and stuff yeah and Definitely. um you'll see more of this on my channel later on this year i i'm a street performer i go down to uh downtown des moines um in their bar district and and play for four hours and come up with 120 200 dollars just Excellent. from bus from busking so it's it's something that i'm able to do and make some money at instead of just can, me and my can me and resorian buck come down and back you up for that kind of money <laughs> yeah <laughs> absolutely absolutely <laughs> I, i'd love that I'm i think we got a band here <laughs> we, we do so I'll tell go. us a little bit about you resorian uh, first of all, let's um, introduce yourself a bit about your channel, and if you don't mind your first name, if you're all right with it. Yeah, uh, well, my real name, well, my channel is called uh, Razorian Buck, and my real name is uh, Sandy, but uh, everyone always knew me as Razor. Um, and I added, I added the I-A-N at the end, and I kind of like it because you know how, like in music, you have like the uh, major scale, the minor scale, then something like the Dorian scale. So yeah. to me, it's like the Razorian scale. Well, I never and, thought of that connection before. That's pretty. That's you put a lot of thought yeah. into it. That's pretty good. And the way you play it is, you just put your guitar completely out of tune, and then, <laughs> then you just play whatever you want. <laughs> well, we can handle that one. Finally, a request we can handle. <laughs> yeah very easy i actually i made a video on my youtube channel uh one of my earlier ones where um i i wrote a song but the song was uh just me tuning my guitar that way i could copyright it so if anyone ever tuned their guitar they oil owed me royalties come up with this guy <laughs> Between you making the busking money and him copywriting tuning, I think I <laughs> I gotta sit down to the drawing board again now. I gotta start thinking of something creative. It's some next level stuff here. It is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> tried the tried the uh uh sorry, I tried to copyright, you know, single notes, but oh. that didn't work out. Well <laughs> A for effort to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, I've been playing music for like 25 years. I started on guitar, mostly just played guitar. Uh, I did learn a little bit of drums, uh, a little bit of keyboard, but not till now have I actually known how to play chords or anything on the keyboard. Then I got into some a little bit of DJing, and I got into hip hop and rapping and all that stuff. So I've been all over the. You're music. pretty well rounded. <laughs> yeah. 
That's um, cool. Just not, not you have some videos yet. where you're learning the piano. You're doing some songs, right? If I remember, yeah. the keyboard. So yeah, um, just uh, there's a guy on YouTube I, I was watching where he just learned stuff and um, just uh, he filmed his progression. And uh, I don't know, I thought it was cool. So I was like, I want to learn how to play piano and I'll film my progression learning piano so I can look back like a year later and be like, wow, look how far I've come. That's brave. So, Hats off to the guy. <laughs> In yeah. The terrible thing about it is that you just see when I'm bad. You never see <laughs> when I. Uh, you see me learning it. You never see me finishing it. <laughs> you got a great outlook on your channel. I love. I love your style and stuff like that. You got a lot because I know you're from. Uh, you're from. You're in Toronto. Uh, no, I'm in uh, Alberta right now. But uh, Alberta, but you were in Toronto. Vancouver. Right? No. I've never been in Toronto. I want to go to Toronto, though. That's where the big YouTuber is. Mine, I think. <laughs> Why did I think you Let were from Toronto? Let the wishes come true. Like, well, I was going to say that was you always, I, your channel always has a little bit of that kids in the hall from the 90s. Oh, yeah? I always find this, like, little, little, like, um, a feeling of it. I don't know. Like the way, I don't know. There's something about it. You kind of got that same kind of an, an air to your channel. Not copied. But a feel of like anything goes kind of a little whimsical, a little fun with everything, a little off the cuff. And I, I that's why I find your channel quite fun for that. Yeah, I don't do scripts. No. <laughs> it's a lot of writing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't Actually, do I went. Oh. Sorry, go ahead. I don't do scripts either. Okay. I'm kind of off the cuff. Yeah. yeah. I think all of us here can agree on that one unanimously. <laughs> <laughs> So we ask musician, musicians like it. Yeah. I, I was just going to say that we we're all a little bit um, uh, unconventional in some ways. And so we just kind of go with it because we get this, we get this live thing going and we play live. And so nothing that's scripted seems authentic. Definitely. That, that that you, that's a very good point right there. It feels too pushed, too unnatural. Mm -hmm. And Doing a live stream, even though we haven't done it that long, is probably the closest thing I've felt since I stopped playing music like 20 years ago or more. It's the first time I've felt that kind of spontaneity and uh, creative style that way. To just sit down and do something, you know, not have it all worked out in advance. So it's, that's, I find, it's pretty cool. Good point, Rick. I really agree with you. Thank you. How about you, Rosaria? What do you think? Uh, about, about like what? a channel? <laughs> you started doing some live. You had your yeah. son with you. Um, yeah, that was a interesting situation. Uh, well, he I like the his father in him. I can see that. <laughs> yeah, I can see that right away. Totally wanted to take over the show. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I like the live, except what I don't like is just it's more live uh, episodes now than it is actual making videos, and yeah. I'm trying to find a good spot in between. But it takes a lot longer to do videos than it does to go live. Yeah, I agree with you. And the live was kind of helping us get up that more people are seeing us. And this would be the nice time to be doing more videos where they actually get to see what I really love to do. But doing this almost every night from 8 to 10. And by the time we're done is 1 o'clock in the morning. And they got kids and yeah. then we got regular work. And when you put it all together, there's not much time left for creating. So, yeah, it is a double-edged sword. You guys have been going hard every single day. Yeah, like crazy. The first two weeks we skipped Sundays, and then this week we did Sunday because uh, the young gentleman on with us last night. Uh, it was so cute. They were amazing, and they, they told us later they were very nervous to be on, but uh, they uh, they uh, were supposed to be on Saturday, and then the last week they had to cancel because he had a sleepover, so we had to put it till Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first that uh, our yeah. guests had to have a sleepover, but uh, yeah. it was funny. But we enjoyed it a lot, though. Yesterday, yeah. it was fun and kind of a family talk. Really, it, it ended up being a great Sunday spot because usually we don't do Sundays, but uh, yeah, it worked out well in the end. So, but. so la last night I did a live stream and I tried to convince everyone on the live stream. I was like, let's all like crash out together on the live stream and then we'll wake up in the morning together and you know my thought behind it was oh i'll break up those watch hours <laughs> so, right on. <laughs> <laughs> yes that's a great idea so how did that work out 
No. <laughs> Nobody agrees. At least you put no. it out there. Now, yeah. I, I've started to look into OBS, and you can run a 24 hour live stream using some software from OBS, with, with OBS. And um, I'm thinking I'm going to try to make my channel work for me 24 7 by running music when I'm not um, actually uh, like copyright free music, like from Bass Rebels or yeah. from, uh, from DJ Quads and a bunch of other people out there. And um, putting that up as a as something that's going on while I'm not actually live streaming. So my channel is always working for me. So I'm always going to be getting those watch time hours. You are a hustler, my friend. I love it. That's a great <laughs> it idea. Is. Yeah, very So you'd be able to just come in in the morning and just kind of like a switch camera, you would be able to go to you without having to stop the stream. Right. And you kind of like a radio just, station. Yeah. Right. You could just transition right into you being on camera and, and have the music fade the music down and you're good. I, I, I can't believe it's that easy, actually. That's actually really cool. That's something to look into. Isn't that kind of what Angelique, uh, what's her name, Angel? Uh, yeah, yeah, Angel yeah. does. That. Yeah, I um, just something similar, I think, but it's a bit different format. Yeah, though. does it run 24 hours a day? She doesn't even do that one. No. <laughs> oh. uh, I wonder what the data plan would be on that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I have unlimited data, so I'm safe. Oh, oh right. <laughs> uh, I'm moving in. <laughs> <laughs> we're bringing people together folks <laughs> Get <a> tissue. <laughs> we're connecting tonight yeah you know my son has to come along so it's gonna be a full house, <laughs> be a oh. house. yeah your son is you through and through and through. The moment he walked to the door, I, he said like three words. I'm like, oh my God, it's the twin. I swear to God. Uh -huh. I loved it. Yeah. And you got that look in your eyes. My oldest son is like that. You're saying some of them in the back of your head is saying, yeah, and this is me. Now it comes what my mother always told me would come eventually. I'm finally getting, <laughs> finally getting the payback she was talking about. <laughs> oh, I, I bet... <laughs> And every time he walks in the room, I got to grab my hat because I know the first thing he's going for is the hat. <laughs> he his father and he's zooming around and he grabs his father's hat, then making signs behind him, and then he talks in the mic and everything else. That was unbelievable. It was so funny. <laughs> yeah. So, Rick, uh, how's the live stream going? You're the, the morning show still doing really well? It, it is. I, ha I didn't do it today. I, uh, I had I actually had to take a trip to the hospital, but um, sure. so I didn't do it today. But the live stream is going great in the morning. It's uh, kind of off hours for a lot of people, but I'm catching a lot of people at the same time that of the day, and um, so I've got a pretty good solid group of people who um, show up all the time, and and it's kind of a it's a good thing because you know it's it, it is and I am a creator of coffee talk where I, I talk about that and I a lot of the time, and then um, most of the time it's just me being. Um, me which is good mm -hmm. um and uh but yeah, usually it's it's a good time um and but i and i miss it when i don't get to do it so it's like it kind of feels awkward to not have something going on at at 10 o'clock eastern isn't that true you almost miss like the people in you know the chat you wonder what they're up to and uh yeah. you feel like something's missing out of it it's, it's a really weird feeling i'm still trying to grapple with it this, you know it's there but i don't quite understand it yet i find Right. I feel the same way. Yeah. 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 You as well? Oh yeah. Do you, want to, be be called, you want to be called Razor or Sandy? You pick. Uh, no one calls me Sandy. You can call me Sandy. I won't be offended, but no one's gonna know who you're talking about. And Razor it is? <laughs> or it can be yeah. really the full. You want Razor or Razorian? It doesn't matter. Razor's I like Razor. short. We'll make Razor a little more, or a better on yeah. uh, closer terms. I always, so. I always tell people that Slash was taken. Touche. Oh. <laughs> Touche, oh, my friend. My. <laughs> so you're, you're still playing, though, as well? Um, I play, yeah, I, I do a lot of recording these days. Um, I've, I've been in a punk band and I've done my own, uh, stuff for a very long time, but, um, you have a video that I was watching, you were out, that's why I thought you were in Toronto and went out, uh, you were recording with a band, it's like a 20 minute video, you were in the, oh recording. yeah, yeah, is that your band that you're talking about? Yeah, and that's in, uh, Vancouver. Right, that's, that's where it was, because I knew you had to travel to get there, because you said into it, 
That's cool. Vancouver's an amazing yeah. city. Oh my god, I love what? Vancouver. What West Coast Canada punk? Sweet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's its own uh, kind of Seattle thing going, you know. I grew up in the in, in California, um, in the punk scene in California. That's kind of where I got my. That's where my music started was um, in the Los Angeles area, and um, I I was really lucky as a as a younger guy to be able to see like bands like Two Suicidal Tendencies and oh any every band came to Los Angeles, so I saw most of them, and oh. um, I it, it 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 was amazing. The the punk scene in Los Angeles was amazing. It was so good. And as a young kid, I could do moshing and stuff. Now I would stay completely away from that. Yeah, I totally hurt. <laughs> but I, I could to, I could totally get into a pit and just totally have a great time and get all my aggressions out. And um, and and just listen. Uh, bands like Pennywise and and the Descendants and um, uh, you know, the Vandals and all this stuff were were, were real big influences to me. I remember uh, going to shows and going, jumping in the mosh pit and doing all that stuff. And the I remember I saw Metallica twice, and on the second time I was right up front, but I was getting crushed so bad mm. I had to tell them I was like, "I need out," and the, the bouncers they knew right away. They just pulled me right out and shake me up. And, I was at that yeah. show in Montreal at the Olympic Stadium where they had the riots with Metallica and Guns N' Roses. Oh yeah. Oh really. Yeah, when James had Phil burnt his arm, he was standing over the fireworks. Yeah, the pyrotechnics, oh. I should say. And During, uh, binge and purge, I think it was. That's what yeah. it was, right? No, it was uh, black it was album. Right it was right before Ender Sandman. It was the last of the end, Justice for All, and they were doing that kind of the tour that never would happen with him and Guns oh, okay. with him and Guns and Roses. And there's one other band, and for the life of me, I can't remember. And but there's James a riot Hatfield every got, time Guns N' Roses shows up. Well, somewhere. that's what happened. See, James Hetfield got burnt. He went off stage. I mean, the band had to end. They were doing uh, Fade to Black, I believe it was, when they blew up. And uh, then they went to uh, the next band was Guns N' Roses. And he sang like three songs and he walked off because he couldn't hear himself properly. And people oh, really? were saying, you know, that was his night that he could have redeemed himself and been the hero, you know, save the show. And there was he riot. something entertaining. Yeah, um, go on to YouTube and just watch his hours of footage of Axl Rose yelling at people. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's a lunatic. <laughs> and I mean, look where he is today. I mean, I'm not knocking what he did. I mean, I loved Guns N' Roses in the beginning, but I mean, he he basically pushed it so far that there's no more respect left for him. And it's too bad because he did a lot of great things at the beginning. Yeah. But he was such a prima donna. He was his own curse and blessing at the same time. But I, the hard part is with singers are different from all other guys in bands because most of them have to be from very troubled backgrounds to write good music that appeal to people. You okay. have to be very yeah. complicated and torn inside. It's hard to be the guy from suburbia that did quite well and their father was an accountant, you know, and go out and be all painful. It's, uh, you know, <laughs> it's hard to take them, you know, the lyrics seriously when it's coming from that. But uh, he was, <laughs> he definitely lived the life. I mean, but, you know, he went too far. Like they tore down St. Catharines. They were Boston buildings. Uh, James had uh, Lars Yo Ulrich and uh, Jason Newstead, the bass player, were pleading with people if they stopped, they would come back and have a makeup tour. And they came back, they kept their word, they came back for Ender Sandman. And it was cool. It was at the old Montreal Forum before they closed it. And it was $16 a ticket for any seat in the house. Wow. And it was the coffin, you know, they had that coffin stage. That was the first time they had people sitting in the middle, like, of the stage. So, so. yeah, yeah like, definitely. Uh, watching the Foo Fighters where uh, Dave Grohl broke his leg but continued playing the entire show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dedication, my friend. Well, <laughs> yeah. he's, a, he's a class act 100%. Oh, yeah. Dave Grohl, he's – I love Dave Grohl. He kept the integrity of what started in the 90s. He was one of the only ones in the end to kind of keep it going. There wasn't too many of them, but he was definitely one that I tipped my hat to. That was true to what they were saying at the time. A lot of them are dead, which is oh, yeah. ridiculous. A lot of them, they, they, the drug overdoses and stuff are crazy. What would happen from the bands in the 90s? Every time I um, I, I listen to Lithium on uh, Sirius Radio, and a band will come on and I'll go, oh, yep, that guy's gone. Nice band. Yep, that guy's gone too. And it's just sad. You know, think of the... I, that was my the prime of my life. I was in my twenties, and um, a lot of those guys from that music are gone. And oh. it's sad. 
it, it it is it's not a, a life where everybody lives to be a hundred that's for sure <laughs> and it kind of went whatever through... happened to silver chair what, you know, what's I wondered about that silver chair whatever happened to them they were good that's a good question actually I'll have to yeah, Google it. <laughs> yeah I, I would right now but Xenia's using the I got the other computer on the side and Xenia, I'm not used to not being in the controls yeah, you can use uh, mine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm uh, using Andrew's computer now, so we're in the mixed roles here. <laughs> I feel so out of place tonight. <laughs> I don't know what kind of internet James has, but I'm surprised he can do those live streams with so many tabs open. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, he really plugs them up. I would be clicking on every wrong. I already click on every wrong one when I'm trying to open stuff. So <laughs> I got like 480 going at the same time. I'm surprised I made it here. Well, you made it. We're <laughs> glad to have you. I'm really glad. <laughs> uh, Rick, I was thinking of you when you're talking about suicidal tendencies. I, what was that? Suicidal tendencies. Like, I, I still think trip to the brain. Every time I hear them, I see yeah. that video. I love That was my first initiation into them. Which my, Rocky, the guitar player, was phenomenal. Yeah, and, and they were just in my hometown. It was called Lewisidal Tendencies. Okay. And it was, um, oh gosh, what is that guy's name? He is one of the original members without, without Mike Muir. And um, so they came out and did a tour called Lucidal Tendencies, and they played a lot of the old stuff that cool. uh, no longer, they never really played in concert that was on their, their albums. Like, and, um, I, and everybody's seen Institutionalized a hundred times, and they did play it. But, um, I mean, it's, uh, you know, I saw your mommy and stuff wasn't really appropriate of those those days you know i i yeah. saw your mommy and your mommy's dead i saw her lying in a pool of red <laughs> come on you, you, that's like that's like classic punk stuff yeah i love it um they, I, i've seen i've seen them a couple of times and uh the one time i saw them they were banned from the city of uh, los angeles for several for lots of years because if they they played this auditorium and um, it got really out of control. People started tearing the cushions cushions out of the seats and throwing them at the band. Oh my god! Oh so my yeah, god. You, you bring a bunch of punks wow. together, and all kinds of stuff goes crazy. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember a band called MOD, Method of Destruction? Yeah, I, I, I can't. I, I remember MOD, but I don't remember. I don't remember the music. You know, what I'm saying there's so much. I can't. Re I can't repeat any of the lyrics here because they tended to go a bit <laughs> over the top. They were with another Canadian band, a punk band called Daglo Abortions. Cool. Well, I know them. And yeah, they remember they had an album cover. It was the album was called Fetus of Fetus, and it had the fetus with jelly beans on it. There was Ronald and Nancy Reagan standing around. Oh wow! <laughs> it That's was a drawing one. And yeah, they yeah. So they had a little bit of a, an issue when they were playing anywhere. And one time they were banned from Ottawa, and uh, these women's groups went out to ban MOD. The the, the the Ottawa Citizen, I think, is the big newspaper there. They took a picture of them protesting but they didn't realize the lead singer of mod had joined the women protesting <laughs> <laughs> when the page came up it was front page news the next day there's all these women holding these signs and right in the middle was i think his name was chuck something he's like like right <laughs> front and center uh, uh, brother john was uh uh chiming into about the uh, why the guys that are still going uh stefan malcolmus jay massex to march still kicking and making awesome tunes from the 90s uh and rocket scientist uh, uh speaking of artists passed on had the pleasure of seeing type o negative about a week before pete steel died i was really wow. bummed wow. <laughs> that's awesome that's a good band go ahead rick no, I, I was. I'm just shaking my head because I, 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 I'm starting to to feel my age because of all these guys being dead, and somehow I avoided drug drug abuse and <laughs> didn't die. I mean, just recently, I mean, the mainstream guys that have died, you know, Chris Cornell and uh, oh. um, Chester Bennington. Yeah. Yes. And, and yeah. that 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 really blew my mind because it, it you know, they. It, and it comes down to addiction. If people were able to stay away from the addictions, they would have been completely fine. But that scene, those music scenes, I knew in LA whenever I was backstage because I had a Fernando radio station and it got me backstage all the time. And there was drugs flowing like this on tables. There'd be stuff all around. And so it would be very hard to be stressed about musician away from home to not need to like to step away and get, you know, get that comfortable feeling again. And all of a sudden they're addicted 
and then you know you've got these guys in the night in the in the 2000, 2010s that are are totally uh, off whack and out of control and they they lose their sobriety and then they kill themselves it's a, it's a terrible cycle it is I, i'm saying that now click on me for a second and now i'm using my drug of choice as you're talking about it there's, <laughs> there's, there's my age <laughs> that's great man oh, God. I, you're not 85 <laughs> here yet <laughs> Gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, there are some there's some bad rollades going around. Please avoid the bad rollades. <laughs> God Almighty! God. So, uh, who wants to talk about retirement savings plans? <laughs> Re retirement? Do we have retirement options in YouTube? Are they going to start offering a four hundred one k? <laughs> now wait, guys. I think uh, Rosarian back is twenty-seven. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm not even talking to him. He's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's going to be the. He, 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 you're carrying all Eric's the equipment too. Oh, <laughs> I'm thirty-seven, but yeah, I still don't know what you're talking about. You're thirty-seven. Thirty-seven? No way. Yeah. I think something like that. Oh, I thought it was, I thought yeah. you're twenty-seven. What did you I do? Don't know. I, <laughs> what did I do? I don't know. <laughs> Shut him off. No Go clue. back to Rick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, making us all look bad here. <laughs> what's, what's, what's funny with musicians is I'm finding that uh, it, you, we stay young at heart for so much longer than people who are have um, like these big responsible careers and and stuff that they do and um if you continue to play music and you still be you're still pretty happy you kind of keep a youthful look about life because um i think a lot of old guys they go oh i'm gonna stick to the singer songwriter thing because i'm, I'm totally into the singer songwriter because i'm old yeah and, um, i've never made that that transition I, I like singer songwriter stuff but it's not my favorite and, and i still listen to punk on a regular basis but i got to admit i've gotten into um gotten into country music in the United States. So um, some of the stuff, like I, I started off by listening to, to uh, um, old, you know, Johnny Cash. You can't, I mean, Johnny Cash is just everywhere. He's awesome. But mm -hmm. then I, started, I started listening to country music here in Oskaloosa, in, in Iowa here. And um, I've fallen in love with it. That some of the lyrics are so real. And where the, where the, a lot of the lyrics that are coming out of alternative music these days are just crap. So. Oh, so yeah they, that's they, why they say that country is so much uh so close to like hip-hop and rap and stuff yeah. yes there's yeah. a lot so of lyrical it. aspect yep and it's you know if you listen to today's music it's unbelievable how you could sit and say i don't like country but i love bon jovi and all these bands of the 80s yeah because just dial down the, you know if you were to take the overdrive that they're using in their songs and just crank it up another six points you have an 80s rock band you hear Def Leppard in it you hear Bon Jovi in it you hear uh, Cinderella in it like constantly so yeah uh, well they were all grown up like my age you know we grew up in that stuff and there was more of a market and country by the time because on the other side most things were going digital at that point when they were at a crossroads so I think they gravitated to country for that reason and that's why I like my five dollar speakers so everything sounds distorted. <laughs> we, we, listen, we listen to local radio. Um, it's, not, it's actually kind of on in the background. We never turn it off. But uh, it's uh, a local station that plays country music, and it's constantly playing in our house. And, right. um, and, and it's it's just kind of – it plays out of a, um, an old – one of those old uh, um, turntable CD player um, – cassette deck type things that you buy with, with a turntable okay. and um, the sound that comes out is a, it's monotone and you actually feel like you're listening to a radio instead of a you know the stereo sound that's unbelievable but it's it's so it's so different and I, I just I don't know what I do without it on <laughs> that's good it's always good to find new stuff it's always good to you know to me when you meet musicians and you really work with even the biggest musicians the first thing you find out is they have no barriers it's the right. i only said it's not the musicians that i hated it was the fan the genre that hated the fans right 
Right. That's what I really didn't like at the time when I grew up with country music. It wasn't so much the country music. I really couldn't stand the fans. No more than probably the fans of country music can stand the ones of rock. Because it's like right. this blinders and I can only listen to this. And now that's the one good thing I think has come out of digitalized music. The way that's accessible to people, I find people more open to, to enjoy other genres more than they were when I was growing up. You know, I, I grew up listening to bands like New Order as well, like the post-punk stuff. Mm -hmm. New Order and Depeche Mode and, and bands like that. And, and uh, the radio station near my house, Kara Q in Los Angeles, broke a lot of those bands. Mm -hmm. And um, so I got I got to experience all of that. And I'm really, I, I was really surprised last year when I started to get into EDM. Oh, yeah. It is so good. Oh, my gosh. The, the musicianship that they're playing in EDM, and it's just so complex. And it... Um, I don't, and, and the kids look at me funny. I have, we have a relative, uh, or actually Brooke's brother, and they said, "Oh, you're going to, and we're going to this ADM show, or EDM show, and uh, it was festival." And they were surprised when I said, "Oh, yeah, it'd be great, it'd be awesome." And I'm like, I, I, you know, I know that the best part of it happens in an EDM show is all of a sudden, kind of in the back, it's kind of funny to watch people. And she goes, "Yeah, there's all some random forty year old guy in the back." I'm like, "Oh my gosh, now I'm, now I feel like I." I'm not allowed to like EDM because I'm not in my 20s. <laughs> <laughs> we have somebody joined us right now. I was wondering if you want to say hi and introduce yourself. Oh, hi. I'm, I'm Nathan Lex Jones. <laughs> hey, bro. Hi. What's up? Hey. <laughs> we can't see you. Nathan Lex Jones. <laughs> How are you? Good. How about Man, you? I love your stuff. <laughs> The guy can play. Yeah. He's still making me want to buy a set of electric drums every time I watch him. So, yeah. <laughs> He's used to, you're used to that comment. I think I say it to you every time I watch something, I believe. You want to tell everybody about yourself a little bit? Huh? Do you want to tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Yes. Um, I'm, I'm a drummer. Um, I guess I'm a, I don't know. I'm just, I guess I'm a drummer, you know. I would say so. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. good. Yeah, thank you. How long have you been playing for? Um, I've been playing it since December 2016. Wow. wow. That's that's you really know. great progress for a couple of years, man. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That was yeah. really good. Well, thank congratulations. You. you stumped me on the first question. I wasn't expecting that answer. <laughs> 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 that's pretty awesome. What, draw, what, what got you into the drums? um well I, I you know i just watch a um a person like from twitch and his name was jason heinen and he he was the one that started me started me to play drums because he does like a lot of um live streams um you know he does a lot of drum covers of songs you know in, in his live stream okay well that's I mean, pretty cool your, your videos yeah. get tons of views I mean that's the amazing thing about it that the percussion the percussion world on on YouTube is so big I, you get tons of views with percussion videos and that's so cool because yeah I mean you do you do all kinds of stuff I, I remember you you have uh, some covers of some Christian music if I remember correctly um, yeah some some all, just all kinds of different stuff and that's so cool to see people out there doing that stuff really thank you so. Uh, do you have an acoustic set as well, or just uh, digital? Yeah, I have. Yeah, I have. I can show you right now. Oh, can you? Yeah, it's right oh, here. Excellent. Oh, good. We get to see you. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, the big reveal, guys. <laughs> I, I've seen glasses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I that's, thought you were really trying to build a mystique, like we never get to see you on the camera. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. In, true, in, in true, in true musical form. Exactly. <laughs> live, live, live on Bruja Studios. The face reveal tonight, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're glad to have you. Uh, yeah. It, it, it took a little bit of while, and I really thought you're uh, hiding your true identity. Yeah. So I, I tried to share some of uh, your channel through uh, while you were talking. It took so okay, long, I'm... I was scared you were going to reveal, and it would end up being like a grandmother from New Jersey or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'd have kind of a Jerry Springer moment going, so. Yeah. <laughs> Not, let's see it, man. Yeah. 
happen. There you go. So yeah, you're able to show us. Yeah, that's what I hear. Do you want to like? What do you mean, like acoustic yeah, drums? Show, yeah, show us around. Sure. Start yeah. With the snare. Yeah, this is all. This is my drum stuff. Uh, you know, I, I bought, bought it in 2010. I never been playing it, but until I'm um, 2016, I started to learn how to play drums by myself. Never, never had drum lessons in my life. Just you know, started beginning by myself. You know. Very. Then this my, this is my electronic drums. You know, I think you can see it. Let me. That sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah, I just, <laughs> yeah. That's that's my electronic drums. Oh, very cool. Oh, let's see. Oh, let's see. How you have the light set up over top of it. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, so you're not in the basement or anything. You're right, like in the in the dining room or something. Yeah, like, yeah. It's just it's actually it's just a room. You know, I don't know what room actually. It's like maybe living room, I guess. Okay. My drums yeah. were over top. We didn't have a bass, but they were over top of our kitchen. My father lost 40 pounds while I learned how to play from walking. <laughs> <laughs> the best shape of his life is the day I bought drums. <laughs> yeah, that's not my mom drums this this the, is the real true story. I'm not even making that up right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I begged my mom to buy me a drum set, and she finally did. But we lived in an apartment building. So I, mm -hmm. when I was learning to play drums, everyone around had to deal with that. And I feel so bad for those people now. I don't know how they put up. You with had it. great tennis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, used to, I used to practice on a um, marching snare in my backyard in, in Southern California. And everyone from probably a mile around knew who I was playing that thing <laughs> because it was just like, you know, it's super, they're loud to project everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And I, I'd have yeah. people say, are you that guy who makes my dog bark? <laughs> Probably. All the old people, Gladys, he's at it again. Gladys, he's playing the drums again. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's yeah. that's some, that's something I'm, I I I try to remain as a um, as an a, adult because I don't do adulting well at all. I, I'm <laughs> about it. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, but I I uh, I try as an adult to um, uh, like not be that person. Like be supportive because here in Iowa, I, I I took this little box into a park and I was playing in the park just relaxing. Someone called the police department on me here. Cause I was suspicious oh. in the park. Sure. Like this dude sitting on a box is like a threat to anyone. Well, it starts with a box. Most kids that fall into the rices, they usually play a box for a couple of years first. That's all it's been. <laughs> yeah, it's, but it was like, you know, people don't know what I play. It's, so it's unfamiliar. They just see some guy pounding on a box and they think that it's uh Bizarre. They think you're going to move on to buckets. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's just a natural progression. We were in St. Louis, yeah. and I heard some of those guys doing the bucket thing, which was fun. I like that. I, I'm really into street musicians. I, I like doing it, and I like um, watching it, too, because it's it's uh, there's some incredible talent playing on the street for, you know, dollars. Yeah. And um, they, they love it. That's their life. That's what they perform. That's what they make their living doing. And during the summer, I can't do it during the winter, but if I lived in a better climate, I would I would busk all year. It's great. It's so much fun. It's an outlet for my for my uh my uh, the the music that I make. So one of my favorite uh, guitar players from Canada, I don't know if you ever heard of him, his name is Colin James. And Colin James was a big Canadian guy at the time. He got noticed by Keith Richards, and he was from Saskatchewan, but made his mark playing here in the streets of Montreal. And that's where he kind of got noticed, and that's where things took off. He did a bunch of videos and that, but now he he does more like the '50s era type of swing band, which mm -hmm. is really good at too. I've seen him live, and I mean he's phenomenal. That's but, that's a great that's a great, great genre of music. There are so many good drummers in that jazz and and big band type scene, and they are uh, so good. For for every classical guitarist that inspired or metal guy, every uh, one of those drummers is usually what in, influences a great drummer. So. Mm -hmm. So who are you into, Nathan? Who's some of your uh, idols, some of your mentors? 
Um, where I, where um, I guess like um, you know, like John Bon Bon John, you know, from Led Zeppelin, this the the yeah, drummer. John Bonham, yeah. Yeah. Um, who else? Um, uh, I was like Dave Grohl by from Foo Fighters. If you, yeah, yeah, he's an amazing drummer. We forget that sometimes yeah. he plays guitar so much, but he really is a great drummer. Yeah. <laughs> do you watch a lot of drum videos, yeah, like trying to get up new, like new skills and stuff like that, or do you just kind of like to do your own thing more? Or? Yeah, I I watch drum videos. You know, you know, I I have, I'm, you know, I've been, you know, I'm in a drummer community on Google Plus. Um, you know, um, cool. you know, I, you know, a lot of drummers they they um share a lot of um drum covers with each other, you know, and I share mine in their Google Plus community. Um. Yeah, very cool. I was with a. Have you ever heard of a drummer named Mike Mangini? Um, yeah. He's uh, one of the considered one of the fastest drummers. He's played with Annihilator. He played with Extreme in them. I was with him at the Nam show when the uh, yeah. was it Evans drums or whatever when he beat when he beat the world record. He, yeah. he did twelve hundred and three taps in a minute in sixty seconds. Wow. I was standing there. You can almost see me in the camera because I think you can see part of my arm there when he did it. He was an endorsee. He is an endorsee for Pearl, I believe. So. You're like, that's my arm. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Frame that arm. <laughs> the guy is, I mean, he's a weapon. It was amazing to watch him go. Like, he was just almost like going into a convulsion. It was that fast. Wow. And he held it for 60 seconds because the meter's counting. You know, it's a top meter, so you see it up on the display. Were those single strokes that he's doing? Single strokes. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. The There's guy a is a weapon. I'll send you the link sometime, Rick. I'd love to see that. I would yep. definitely love to see I saw, that. I saw a very similar thing like that, uh, but for a pianoist, playing one key as fast as you could. Okay. Beat, beat the world record or something on girl, Guinness, you know? But that was really interesting. So, oh. Um, I hate to see the idea it's done. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of abuse. <laughs> My hat's off to them. <laughs> well, it's always good to excel at your trade, so you know. Well, you, yeah, you know, uh, YouTube is really good for uh, like if you want to do drum covers and stuff, like because they have almost any track yeah. you would ever think of, yeah. just without drums, and then you could just play along. And that's not something we had before YouTube. That's for mm -hmm. sure. Oh no! Oh. Same as guitar yeah. tab. Uh, what's the name of that one that does the tab for you? Uh, on the guitar program, and uh, you can like you know you, it, it, you people make tabs and you can bring it in and actually see it being played like on a fret of a guitar, and you can. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Guitar hero, not yeah. guitar hero. I will come. What's, what is it? I thought I thought you said it. Uh, oh, I thought you said the name of the program. Sorry. I drive me crazy. I got it on my computer. I'll find it. And it's just amazing that you can play it and see like where your fingers are going because it's nice to read tab, but just to have the ability to have it like uh, the bend. Oh, yeah, you're here. I forgot. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, Joey was asking to say hi. So I'm oh. sorry. I'm so, back to my oh, I see. Okay, Joey. Uh, He's, uh, special hi to Joey, and I'm back to yeah. my duties. Joey. <laughs> It's always Joey. Brooke, Brooke wants to step in and say hello. Of course. She does. Come here. Now, if I remember right, Brooke, Brooke likes to yodel, right? If I remember correctly. Yeah. Yodel, yodeling is her main outlet for her music. Mm -hmm. Hi, Brooke. Hello. hello. <laughs> Are you the manager? She's, she's actually working on her taxes. Tax oh, date in the United funny. States is tomorrow. We did ours today, so <laughs> I think uh -huh. they passed already. I thought it was fifteenth for states. It's a if this falls on a weekend, we get two additional we, we get additional <laughs> days business days. So we are waiting till the very last minute. Yeah, yeah, we're kind of in the, we're in the same boat pretty much. <laughs> um, <laughs> not that it's always fun or anything. And once again, Rick, we're showing our age. <laughs> I, I know, I know, I know. Dude, cheers! I thought that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> Our sponsor for tonight. <laughs> I, I, should have, I should have here's my coffee, my heart, my heart stuff for the evening. Yeah, I got coffee. I need coffee. I'm gonna walk away from this for a second and get coffee. What are you uh, drinking, Nathan? Oh, uh, I don't have a drink right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's young. He doesn't have to be rehydrated. <laughs> 
Are so you Nathan, able to what, uh, why drums? Yeah, well, why drums? Well, because you know, um, drum is very interesting because you know it's, you know, I'm, i you know, when I'm in the car, I always like, you know, play, you know, when the 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 drums playing on the song, I always like, you know, like to play, like to play it, you know. That's why maybe that's the reason why, I, you know, I, I know how to play drums, you know. That's cool. So like you're always, you were always kind of tapping along with anything you listen to. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <But that's, laughs> I got into drums because we had 80, I come from a very small rural area. There was 80 guitar players, two bass players and no drummers. <laughs> and I literally went, bought a, two cases of beer and got it. my friend's father drunk and bought his drums from him once he was loaded when I was 16 and got them out of there before he sobered up. I had my friend buy the beer and that's how I learned how to play the drums. That's a musician for you. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. a country band too and they had this really bad logo on the front of them and everything. <laughs> and I lived in a rural area so it's hard to get parts so I was scared if I cut the logo if I took it off with a razor blade I might nick it and then I would have no drums so I just left it there for like the first eight months or something like that so. <laughs> WJ Auto Works says uh, he knows how to play the radio yeah <laughs> <I love that. laughs> By the way, we still have comments about your hair. Oh, jeez. They'll never stop. Yeah. Dude, you, you look so... You, you look like James Hetfield. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm not, I'm not very good at uh, describing how I want my hair cut, so I always bring in a picture. That's the best way to do it. Well, yeah, because I can't. Some people can say I want this and that. I have no idea. So, yeah, I... Uh, I brought in the picture and the girls, she said exactly what you said. That's why it surprised me when that came out. I'm just looking. Oh, there it is. So I brought in a picture to get my hair cut and here it is. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the so more I look at the, and especially when I'm wearing black and stuff and he wears glasses when he's not playing, <laughs> I see a bit of it. <laughs> So, so, so she I, did a good job. I guess so. Yeah, you know, she changed me. I wish you could put the money in my pocket instead of just the haircut. But anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> we need a little bit more beard, but otherwise, and that's gonna grow up. <laughs> yeah, she just she likes the beard. Yeah, I like the beard. <laughs> okay, back to me. <laughs> <Nathan. laughs> Nathan, would so you now be you able to have to finish? Oh. You just have to finish every sentence with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least it's not Lars Urich. That is the most tiresome man. The one person in life I wish would have never learned English. I swear to God. <laughs> he never shut up since they taught him. Like, God. <laughs> you ever see him in an interview? You know, like, it's the most basic question. Do you like drums? Well, ever since the evolution and since man beat on his skin, and it's like, oh, blah, 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 get it's over it. Poetic. He's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I, he's verbal diarrhea. I'm sorry. That's the only way I can describe him. I can't stand him. There, there goes your music career. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was pretty short lived to begin with, so I guess a pretty fitting way to end it. <laughs> no, I, I mean I respect him in the band stuff like that, but oh my god, I find him like nails on a chalkboard to listen to. Oh, I. I find a lot of people like that. Um, it's not just musicians. It's uh, every, a lot of people in the world kind of do that. And so I just you, you try to be polite, and people go on this big long tangent or something. And so if it's somebody like Lars, I just can go, Boop, gone, gone. Don't have to watch this. In real life, you have to sit there and talk to somebody. With Lars, I don't have to listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> There, and then there's the opposite. Do you guys know Dennis Chambers? I do not. Yeah. Know. Probably one of the greatest drummers, I would say, to come out, played on the Tonight Show and everything. And uh, oh. I actually was sitting in an airport with him for a couple hours. We met crossing flights. And he was with my drum manager. And, and where Lars never talks, Dennis Chambers never says anything. And he's so funny because he has that southern drawl when he talks. And we were talking about going to California. We were going for the NAMM show. And my flight was leaving, and they had to wait because theirs got screwed up. So I was telling my drum manager about it. We were saying, I said, I'm going to be leaving soon. And he just looks at my drum manager and goes, gee, Paul, his sounds faster than ours. 
why didn't we take that flat? <laughs> <And it's> just... <laughs> <laughs> it's and crazy way back in the day. That... <laughs> yeah. Back in the day, I guess these big these bands had jets and stuff, right? You see yep. Metallica would have their logo plastered on a jet, and you don't really see that anymore. Did you see the Iron Maiden one? Yeah, I saw that. No. That is insane. <laughs> they have their own set. Really? I got to look that up. And you know who the pilot is of it? Is the oh, singer of the Iron drummer? Maiden. The singer. Oh, really? The commercial pilot. He got his license there oh, when he wow. left the band for a while. That was his dream. And he flew for British Airways. So now he flies six months a year and tours six months a year. That's awesome. Yep. They gave the him the I always talk about the dream, live the dream. That if that you know, he's like got this incredible music career. You could take the time to take all those, all those lessons it takes to get your commercial rating. Yep, fine. That's that's a dream for that guy. It, it's easy to get rich mm. and high on yourself and think, you know, what I made it. I don't have to do anything else. But to go back and do what you originally always dreamt of doing, right, is more like he's that show is on Discovery Channel. He had his own series. Uh, Talking about flying, he talked to different pilots. He he got to fly a bunch of different planes each week. You know, he would like feature one and stuff like that. Isn't one of them a professor in the music academy? Uh, that was Mike Mangini. Oh, okay. yeah, Mike Mangini and uh, the drummer from uh, Rob uh, Morgenstein from. Uh, uh, oh my God, oh my, I can't I forget his name now. They're both professors at Berkeley. Uh, uh, um, oh my God, sing original David Lee Roth. Yeah. Did you know that David Lee Roth studied to be an ambulance technician? Really? When he was away from Van Halen those years, he actually did 200 calls in New York and stuff like that. And wow, that's kind of cool. I, I I don't know how I feel. If it, yeah, I know. That was my part of that to, one. Sh showed up to take care of you. guys. kind of like, uh, hot <laughs> for teacher? Yeah, yeah exactly. It's <laughs> like a, sitting there checking your pulse there. Uh, hey! <laughs> uh, the murdering says they watched the commentary where they show Bruce Dickinson flying their jet. Yeah, yeah that, it is that's cool. awesome. That's an amazing documentary. They're, if you get a chance to watch it, anybody who haven't, it's really a good piece to see. Their flight number is the name of the video. It's called Flight 666. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Definitely watch it. Nathan, are you able to play a little bit for us? Um, yeah. Cool. Me. Love it. Yeah, we got to yeah. get everybody. <laughs> Resorian, do you have your guitar with you? <laughs> it's not plugged in. I got one. Well, yeah, we'll get her plugged yeah. in and we'll come to you right after. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to work our way down the line. I don't, I don't have a nice amp. Oh, you, Can you guys okay. see the clue? It okay. doesn't matter. <laughs> I mean, I'll sing. <laughs> I, I, anything. <laughs> I think you might have one. Nice. Excellent. Thank you. Give me that. That was amazing. <laughs> yeah, God, that was such a little taste. <laughs> Is that you're loud? Being you're being auditioned right loud? now. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Is that loud? <laughs> How would you put me on? Uh, where are we here? How would you like to come to Los Angeles and record an album? <laughs> this is a surprise. <laughs> uh, you're on uh, Mars Ridge. <laughs> this is a new version of Star Search. Never <laughs> <laughs> that was really cool, man. Yeah, I would love to have. Thank you. Uh, okay, it's the next one now. R Rosorian is up. I don't have anything. Um, <laughs> you're you're next. No, no, no you're going. <laughs> <laughs> I've made an ass of myself enough with the guitar. <laughs> I, okay. I don't have, okay. We can go over to uh, to Rick in the meantime. Oh, there we go. Oh, no, he's there. Are you ready? I got an acoustic. Then play acoustic. <laughs> well, I remember I was telling you about how to play a guitar on a tune. <laughs> 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 That's gonna be an example. <laughs> this is like a, a 
twenty dollar guitar or something. Let's see. Should I use a pick? Yeah. It's, it's all in the pick. Yeah. Keep going, keep going. Oh, that's actually just... sounded great. Yeah, I was just starting to get into it, man. <laughs> I kind of dig the off tune sound. Yeah. I was just yeah, think the same that's... thing, Rick. <laughs> yeah, you're just wondering how come this guy isn't famous, right? <laughs> that is actually. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded great. Uh, it's way out of tune. Uh, come back to me. <laughs> okay. Rick, you're on the hot seat. All right. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll play. Now I'm nervous. I've got a live audience, but I play, and it's kind of strange. That was really good. That was I know. Now we're gonna try. That was so oh my god, that was amazing. And I always say that that's what I was gonna get at tonight when I was talking about the master sets. Everyone's excited to see them, but there's so much to say for the hand percussion stuff. Oh, it's so much fun. I love it. Because I I stopped I stopped doing this uh this uh snare drum stuff and I found when I found the cajon, I found that I was able to like play the same kinds of rudiments on the cajon that I that I can play. Um, on this drum pad, like you know, I I, I played uh, some hertha's, those, and then um, uh, there's some some more stuff. Like I did a, uh, I was playing, which is basically a right-handed tap uh, drag, but it's got a it's kind of a triplet style. And um, then there was then a simple thing, five stroke rolls. That's a six stroke roll. Week. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> really? I can do that. I just don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are big, uh, uh, great room from people. They are just loving it. Uh, yeah. So amazing. Love the drumming. Sounded great. Yes, sound amazing. Drumming is awesome guitar like people are just loving it so and uh, more people come again so we need more music and nathan you get ready because yeah. after we uh, do a resorium we're coming back to you because i can tell there i could see a tap in your feet the head going there <laughs> when rick was playing and i can tell you're inspired so i want to <laughs> i gotta get you back on for a second run so Okay. So, so get too comfortable. <laughs> i found this thing does anyone know what this is that's a strum stick no. <laughs> yep. What is well, it? That's, there's, there's no wrong way to play that. <laughs> that's yeah, why I, I got it. I think I think that's true with music. There really is no way to not to play it right. No, that instrument we were going crazy at at the NAM, and we ended up buying like six of them. 
and we couldn't put them down. Our boss almost fired three of us because we couldn't leave the damn thing alone. <laughs> that is the most addictive instrument. <laughs> is it addictive? I don't know. I was just going to use it as a baseball bat, but then I know it says strings. <laughs> <laughs> I should pick one of those out. I I I uh I take her. I'll send it to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I I, uh, I have a ukulele, but I haven't played it in so long. It's ridiculous. Um, I, I started getting into that the ukulele. See, kind of blew up on the west coast when I was um, still living out there. Um, and then I moved to Iowa. There was no um, outlet for it because, of course, Iowa is like 10, 15 years behind the coast. <laughs> and it really is. And and so I, like, tried to form a ukulele club in, in Des Moines where I was living, and no one was interested. There was no interest in the ukulele at all. And now you can't get away from them in Des Moines. Every music store has got them. Everybody wants one. And I remember uh, being so discouraged. I was, I was selling one that I – I needed some money, so of course you don't need to go to sell your music. You sell musical instruments, which is a strange yeah. thing for a musician. But um, I uh, went to sell it, and I ended up giving this three hundred dollar ukulele to a guy for fifty bucks. So I had to pay my rent, and you know, you're, oh. just like, you're just like, now I'm sitting here thinking, you know, oh come on. But another ukulele that I sold this like a year ago, I got three hundred and fifty dollars for that, so I kind of balanced it out a little bit. Yeah. It's right. funny how things come in waves like that. Right. And the Midwest and Canada is the same as the States. It's always that kind of like a, there's a, you know, and a Saskatchewan would be an example of that. Alberta is more progressive, but like Manitoba, Saskatchewan, they definitely go through that kind of like a bit of a delay in trends. So. Yeah. I, I want to, I want to busk in Toronto sometime. I love Toronto. I, I, I am a, in love with Toronto. I spent, when I spent some time there, um, there was nothing, there's n nothing like, Toronto, but I've never been to Montreal, so we've got to make that happen too. Montreal's got its own scene altogether. It's um, uh, especially for what you're playing, like you know the the type of music and that. I mean, you're gonna find it all through the parks and everywhere. I would say Vancouver too. Would you say at uh, Resorian? Uh, I don't know. I think I've just been in Vancouver for so long that I'm just tired of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's how, but, uh, that's how it would be in Los Angeles as well. Do you know, a little um, tip for if you're ever in Montreal, the Queen Elizabeth yeah. Hotel downtown on Rainy Levesque Street, uh -huh. there's a room at the top, and that's the room where uh, um, John Lennon recorded uh, Give Peace a Chance where they had their love in. Wow. That's the hotel room where it was recorded. Wow. So where I grew up in uh, Vancouver was a uh, place, Burnaby. And that's where, yeah. when I was coming up, before I played any shows and I was just in a band practicing, I'd go see these uh, older uh, people that were playing the shows and venues just when I could was aged to get in. And the crew that were playing back then in my circle before I was coming up were uh, JAR and okay. Noise Therapy and Nickelback right so and uh Nickelback and all them they used to rehearse at the same rehearsal studio so I kind of knew them before they blew up I I didn't know them but you know we passed in the hallways and stuff and I, I remember I was right right around that time is when they got signed and blew up and I went to this show and it was just it got out of hand and the barricades were crashing down and we all knew that was the day Nickelback was getting signed. You know, I, Nickelback is one of those bands that got a bad rap here in the States. Everyone's like, oh, who likes Nickelback? But I mean, uh, like, yeah, we, we awesome. say the same thing here. Well, they're awesome though. I mean, I think their musicality is really good. People, they, they kind of fit that niche between radio airplay and, and like hardcore and it's fun. I mean, I, I, I enjoy their music and, it's like, oh, it's Nickelback. But yeah, if you really listen to Nickelback, those guys are strong musicians. And you know what? To meet them, they're actually very nice guys. They yeah, got yeah. a really, I feel like they got a very unfair rap. Yeah. For what happened, you know? And they kind of almost became like the, the living meme. And I don't think it was always yeah. deserved. I think it was just that time of day and um, that time uh, period, excuse me, that. Just everybody kind of wanted to get negative on music, and they were kind of like the poster boy for it. Because mm -hmm. like it a really lot felt like of Canada, but we Can Canadians are fickle that way, because they really want the underdog to get ahead, and then it seems as soon as they get ahead, they turn on them and say they're sellouts. Yeah, 
because Canada never had any big venues to go to. It was you went to the states if you wanted to get big. So if you stayed in Canada, there wasn't there wasn't a great ceiling. You know, there was a big ceiling over you all the time. So yeah, I I felt bad for them. I feel really feel that they were mistreated for that. I agree, I agree completely. Um, that another another famous Canadian who uh, was treated poorly was still treated poorly as Alanis Morissette. Yeah, that, that that girl is really good. Some of the stuff she wrote in the nineties is is great stuff. But she she, you know, she just got a lot of bad press from being that Canadian pop star. Yes. And, and and that really sucks because she's she that I mean her songs were like from the heart. Yeah. And um I saw her in Omaha and mm -hmm. um the one hand in my pocket song that they, yeah. they do. Um some radio station had come up with some kind of hand jive movement to it and stuff, and she got offended, like you know, it was it was really hey, stop doing that. I don't want I'm, this isn't you know, this isn't some kind of play where I'm doing this. This is from the heart, you know, and people were still doing it, and so she left the stage. I mean, that's that, mm. it, and, and that, that it contributed to her the people's bad opinions of her. Um, but I, I still enjoy her music. I mean, it's it's uh, um, it's got that angst from the 90s that I still feel, I guess, a little bit. Yeah, and it was, it was she was speaking of a time when she got tired of the pop side when she was Alanis and changing over, and you could really hear in her songs, you know, they were very honest, kind of like Adele did when she first came out. Yes, exactly. And, Here's another Canadian band from the uh, from the early years. Oh. Deception? <laughs> wow. That's me right here. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> yeah. You did, you're you're contributing your, to your superstar right now. That's right. <laughs> this is where it all began, mm -hmm. folks. Where's your guitar? And uh arena full of people we played at a, what they call a maison de jeune which translates to house of the young like a place for young people to go uh-huh <clears throat> there was only two of us that had just turned 18 the rest were like 17 and 16 and the organizer said why don't you play the arena in the town where we grew up and i was like sure we'll like play the the the, the forum when we're done as a laugh but at the time, they were trying to get new advent, new ventures for young people to do things because it was a small area. And the guy called me three weeks later and said, well, if you want to play, I got the arena. Oh, and wow. Said, kidding. And he goes, no. He goes, and we have a, a tentative date, and it would be like a month and a half from now. We didn't even know enough songs. <laughs> 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 our Literally, our PA system was nothing more than a set of old Xena speakers set up on the sides, you know, like that. <laughs> Wow. And a month and a half later, we played. We had over a thousand people. They rented the sound system. We had over twenty thousand watts come in from a sound stage in the town of Gaspe. They brought in by truck. Wow! The lights. That's impressive. Budweiser yeah. sponsored us. I mean, through the local sub, you know, local division. But on the posters, you would see all Budweiser onto it. And the local radio station had giveaway contest, and it did so well that the town paid us for five more shows. That's awesome. So they asked how much we made, and literally we each made four hundred dollars. There was six of us because the manager got an equal cut, and we would put six hundred dollars in our bank account that we started. So it was really, yeah, it was it was just lucky to have that chance to do it. So, so we got together last year, and that was the, that was Xenia's putting up the picture. This was the first time we had all been in the same room in twenty five years. And uh, we got together and had supper together. And the singer couldn't oh, make it the last minute. He had a bad flu. But yeah, there Xenia's blowing up the picture. You can see the... It was a oh, Labat yeah. that sponsored us, yeah. But some old news <laughs> clippings and stuff like that. And, yeah. Little, 25 years later. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, hon. <laughs> that, that'll be all. <laughs> Thanks for coming no. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good to have you help. <laughs> Nathan, you ready to hit those drums again? Yeah. <laughs> You've been too quiet there. I got to get you on the scene here. Yeah. So I've been shy so much. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to the old guys talk. <laughs> you want to play another one for us? Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the first time you jumped right into it, you did amazing. People loved it. They were talking about it in the chat, so. Yes. Do we want to get some more drums? 
We do. <laughs> I guess that's that's. I guess I can show you another job. <laughs> I guess. Come on, man. This is what this is for. Self promotion. Yeah. Let's go. Exactly. Yeah. All right. More. 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 It up. <laughs> One more round for the first. Let's see how fast you can go. Yay, yeah. Let's see. More. More. <laughs> One more. More. Keep playing. <laughs> this loss. <laughs> oh. All right. Yes, please, Your turn, Andrew. Uh, I'm waiting. For, we're getting Rosorian on. <laughs> he thought we forgot. I, guess, we did it. <laughs> oh, I almost got out of it. You were so close. <laughs> okay, give me a second. Not a problem. <laughs> I think he's hoping that his internet connection will die or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I ran out of I, I, it says uh, for Nathan, uh, awesome oh, job, man. Nice drowning from Vanessa <laughs> Kitty. Yes, play them Reese's Mill off road adventure. There's a whole bunch of fans here for you. <laughs> play them. Okay, cool. Oh, no, I'm not playing. I'm just waiting on resort. I'm just killing time. <laughs> I get to fight. You put me on the spot the other night when you got me to get the guitar out. Well, you already have it out. So. And when she did it, I thought in my head, hmm, what dress am I going to lay her out in? I she displayed, but then I said, fine, I'll play. <laughs> I love when you play, so maybe we'll get to play a little bit more. Well, I'm not ready. Is he up? Oh, is he still? No, nope, he's not ready, so you can play. Don't, don't, don't do that. Can't wait to see and hear his guitar. I know. He plays that with other nice oh, live stream he's playing. Great job, man. You know, I'm waiting for technology to, to catch up to this so we could jam jam. I know. I know, Wouldn't that be I, such a disaster right now if we all tried to oh, play at the same time? I think the, the chat room would be complaining in a large yeah. way. <laughs> Everything off by a couple of seconds. Yeah. The that might sound really cool. You never know. <laughs> Maybe we can make a career out of this. <laughs> all you have to do is guess what I'm going to do two seconds before I do it. <laughs> <laughs> or in some cases, two seconds after you've done yeah. it, and then... <laughs> and then the other guy would be way ahead of you. Well, electric drums years ago, Nathan, when I first tried them back in the early 90s, that was the hard part about them because unless you had money like the drummer from Def Leppard, there was always a tiny bit of delay. So you almost had to pay it, play like a millisecond off time to keep time. And that's challenging. <laughs> what, are you, what, are you, what are you smoking there, Andrew? Oh, yeah. I forgot she didn't have the camera. Belmont? <laughs> De Maurier. De Maurier, okay. Uh, a true Bel Quebecer, Bel I guess. Bel Belmont's ruined American cigarettes for me. Oh, did they? <laughs> they did. The charcoal filter was just so much so much better for me than, than these crappy marble I smoke here. 
Well, I try not to smoke on screen too much. I try to be good about it. But every <laughs> once in a while, and my cameraman keeps forgetting tonight that she's running it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, camera person. <laughs> Are we ready there, Ray Zorian? Well, I need a sound check here. I don't know. We'll see if you can hear anything. Check, check, one, two, you're good. <laughs> tell me, uh, tell me when it sounds. Uh, what? Hold on. There we you go. You guys still here? Well, we can, can hear. hear anything? Really? Oh, yeah. Is it good? Or do I have to go up? Because I don't hear myself. We hear you. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's do this. You start. Well, we can't play together. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy ideas. Okay. Well, does anyone have a request? <laughs> just, you just give her hell, we'll listen. So what song was that? That was uh, Jump in the Fire, not Jump in the Fire, uh, no, close. This is jumping the fire. <laughs> I used to play that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can only get my guitar or me. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Was it off? <laughs> it's still, that technology's not quite there for us to be able to do it together. Yeah. <laughs> Next year it'll be fine. We'll just exactly. <laughs> You're up. <laughs> it's like tag. Me uh, here? Go on to play. You want him to play? There we go. What was that? It's your, your turn. It's my turn? <laughs> yeah. Sure. Thank you. 
Man, you really get some good rhythm on that thing. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm checking out the chat. I pulled the chat up so I could actually uh, see this. This is wow. So, so you can take requests. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> People are loving it. Uh, they're super and. Uh, yeah, they're just uh, all supporting mm. you guys and loving the drums, loving the box, <laughs> uh, the, the guitar, uh, just asking for more. You're up, Razor. Okay. And requests are coming in, so. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> the old oh, is that too loud? Amazing. Uh, for me, Joey says it, it was amazing. Oh. Oh, there we go. Mm. Keep it going. Keep it going. <laughs> And I don't know where it goes from there. <laughs> I, I only know bits of songs, okay? I'm the same way now, too. <laughs> don't feel bad about that. Same, same thing. You don't play them all the time. You remember parts here and there, but the whole song seems like a complete mystery. Yeah. Oh, I got too much delay on that one. Much delay. I, hey, with that, with that, that was great. Oh, what's, cool even, what's, what's even cooler though is is the cigarette smoke blowing over you. As you get <laughs> the visual, the visual is totally cool. Rick is going to get a band soon if he doesn't stop. <laughs> <laughs> the guitar was on fire. Hey, I'm a rocker tonight, so I got to have a smoke going. Otherwise, I wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, please blow some out of your uh, vape there, Rixie. Uh, I will, you look bad. I will, hold on. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, there you go. That's oh. good. Yay. <laughs> Nathan, we no don't endorse smoking for uh, musicians as a young man. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't start. No matter, no matter how cool it seems with all your friends, just don't, don't do it. The nicotine really will address you. Yes. <laughs> oh my god so who's up nathan you up yeah you want to go wait the drumming yep you've been sitting there too quiet i don't like that i want to get you going the music seems to get better over time this is awesome custom cards uh Murder Inc. says it's a fog machine. Rick, use a fog machine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're live, folks. <laughs> we are. I Peace. love it. I had a phone. 
<laughs> That's how our video started last night. Our live stream started last night by a phone about the camera falling. So don't feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> we, could, we could start a band. It would be called Live in Latent. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? It could be a head. Oh, sorry about that. What was that, Rick? It could be a head. Yeah, I'm telling you. God, God knows some of the newer music sounds kind of bad like that. So uh, <laughs> we're off. <laughs> good bring up another topic before somebody plays. What happened to hip hop? Yeah, you just cut it, you loop it, yeah. and you got a song. Exactly. <laughs> that falling camera all of a sudden is your big intro. Like. <laughs> <laughs> you sample it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're up, sir. It's your time. <laughs> okay. You're up, uh, Rick's up. I'm up, okay. Camera three to Rick. <laughs> <laughs> feeling that man yeah i would have never thought like uh, in the, our latest uh, stream when i asked you what is the box i was <laughs> so surprised and even more surprised now actually hearing it i i love it it's my it's my favorite percussion instrument by far now i i love that it's it's not a drum set that takes up so much room i can set it in the corner and use it as use it as a stinking drink stand or a food stand or uh, <laughs> you know, sit on it you know you, what other instrument can you carry through an airport Pull the bag down and have to have your own seat in a clouded, crowded waiting room. Yeah, very versatile. That's true. For the man on the go. Yeah, exactly. You're up, Rosario. Well, my, oh, I don't even know what to play anymore. Well, just play what comes to you. <laughs> I wish I could get Rick and Nathan on with you right now on this. Yes. Yeah, you can. I'll just follow them. See, Nathan, you start. I'll just follow you. <laughs> yeah. You guys start. Yeah. And I'll Where follow I... along. really interested in hearing how that sounds after. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this just keeps getting better, Reese's Mill of Road Adventure says. So. <laughs> yeah, you guys tell us in the chat how that sounded. <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 was, I, I, was, I was trying to keep a pace, but it, 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 was, it, we were, it, was, yeah, it was difficult. Yeah. 
it's, it's definitely a test of timing. Yeah. yeah. Well, oh, when I'm not in tune, I have to go out of time. I like it. Sounds great. <laughs> This is the first jam YouTube night I've seen. It was awesome. Yes. Yeah. I used to know the solo two of because I was putting the two of them together, but that's it. Uh, What's that? I'm going to step away for a minute. I'll be right back. Oh, no problem. <laughs> You're up, You got something for us, Razor? Uh, you look ready to go. To, I'll play some of the chat notes. <laughs> Chat, what was that? <laughs> uh, it was, it's um, oh my god, Nirvana. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned the song earlier, I think. Yes, yes. Like, Nirvana is the band I listen to lots. Was around when they wrote, and I can never remember the name of one of their songs, yeah, but I know their song. <laughs> yes, because right. they always pick these off the wall <laughs> names for their songs. <laughs> yeah, Puppet Gut TV got it. Nirvana, <laughs> Lithium. Lithium. Of course, it stops there. I'm just the backup guitar know. guy here. <laughs> It's a, that little lick at the end I never bothered to learn, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you, ever hear, you ever hear how he play, how he came up with that riff? No. He, he just changed his strings. He was playing around, and he was playing that circus song. Dee, 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 dee. It's kind of based on wow. that. Yeah, that's I know that. It's like, oh, that sounds amazing. Here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. 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 We wish he would be here. I know, because uh, yeah. I seen his guitar clutch. I know, really. we wish he would be here too. I, I, we yeah. hope in the near future to have you on in one of uh, yeah. this music sessions. It's Take amazing. me down to the Paris. Yes, it is true story. Throw me the drummers. Yes. <laughs> 
exactly. <laughs> That's all I remember. <laughs> uh, coming up for Crazy Train. Can you play Crazy Train? I know you can. <laughs> yeah, but I don't remember much of it. Uh... one oh let's start, out, let's start out with one like smells like teen spirit everyone knows that one <laughs> yep oh no <laughs> It was getting but there. It was getting pretty close. The leg was so right. bad. I know it was so hard. Right? <laughs> um, <right. laughs> I know it was so hard. That. <laughs> I'm trying I, to think. What's a Nirvana song that would be harder to figure out? I'm trying to think. <laughs> Classic. Uh, classic. <laughs> one second, it's louder. Uh, there's crazy train. Oh, uh, <laughs> then. I don't even know. I fell into. Keep it going. You were just getting started. No, you got to pull out this thing to see our sponsor. <laughs> Bob Marley's request. Oh, God. I don't know. Do you know Bob Marley? No. no. Who's that? <laughs> that was so amazing. You're just sick of that bug. No. Nope. <laughs> love that. Classic stuff, best live stream ever from R2 oh. Marvin. I agree, Joey says. Mm -hmm. uh, Manuel Fish is into and he was actually asking for Bob Marley. Oh. Uh, R2 Marvin, oh. uh, were you coming in? Is that what you were guys talking about with Joey? Are you coming up? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, that's right, Nathan. Nathan is actually in the chat reading all your amazing comments, guys. So go and support him. Uh, mm -hmm. And all our other guests as well. I will drop the links below again. I, I am I am twelve away from uh, five hundred tonight. Oh. Oh, guys, twelve away from five hundred. The Corn Life Network. We can do it. I'm just dropping in all the links again. So if you haven't been on there yet, go and follow. Get your grandmother to join so she can follow them too. Come on, guys. 12 That's from right. 500. Grandpa, <laughs> and your dog. 
That's right. Maybe Bon Jovi and them are listening to us right now, and they're going to join, and they're going to vote. We can do this. Oh, I'd love to see you hit 500. You deserve every one of them, my friend. Thank you very much. No, I, no. I, I, I set my goal for this. Uh, I'm a creator of Bon to uh, 550, and I'm thinking I might have to up that a little bit. I think that's just the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, I, I don't see any problem there. No, I hope you get it. Uh, you. Oh God, I hope he really gets it. I'm, yeah. <laughs> okay, we can do it. Get we need James here. Bread. Yeah, we need James. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, where is, where is James tonight? We need a drum roll for five hundred. Yeah. Well, thirty nine. Eleven well, more. 11 more we can do it nathan got over 1100 yesterday on the live stream excellent nathan so, uh, congratulations to you yeah so yeah. that's amazing Woo. so we can make 500 uh, over for uh, corn life network and rick do you guys know the song um dance the night away by van halen yeah you do yeah <laughs> You were the last one because of your age. I was expecting that that really <laughs> to be the first. It's no offense to you, but I'm really proud to hear that because I'm a huge Van Halen fan. I am too. I love oh, classical. You are as well. And you, you know in the song how it – I'm the only one here that doesn't know it. What's that? I'm the only one here that doesn't know it. Oh, you don't? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <There's a rhythm. laughs> you're the in-between age, so you're kind of a – you're the wild card. <laughs> I get a pass? <laughs> yeah. I came into Van Halen in, in 1984, much to my parents' chagrin. Of course, that was, their, I think, their biggest album at that point, right? Yeah. That was their last album altogether as original That's band, true. too. That's true. And their first great. number one hit that, uh, that they got, and it was Eddie Van Halen basically, for the most part, not playing a guitar, so a lot of the purists didn't like it, like Jump. With, but. with Jump, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, Panama. I, 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 Panama was my favorite. Um, I... I uh, and there was a bunch of songs on that album were great. I, I broke a, a walk band listening to that thing. And if you know what a walk band is, you're really old. <laughs> Remember, Nathan, when you dropped your camera? You don't have to feel so bad anymore. Oh. <laughs> I just kind of had my own. <laughs> I forgot to hit the pause on the amp. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll drop my uh, guitar for views. <laughs> oh. <laughs> my, my the neck of my the head of my, my headstock just kissed the wall and the amp at the same time, pretty much. <laughs> uh, Joey's asking for Blue Rodeo. I love Blue Rodeo. We actually oh. went to to the uh, Christmas train and uh, had amazing yeah watch of. I just don't. I I don't even know any of their songs. Do you know their songs? I know one. I think. No. What am I doing here? And it's got a capo on it. Five days in May. I love that. One. I know their songs, but I don't know how to play them. Yeah. Uh, good God, I don't know. I wouldn't even be able to guess. I wouldn't want to do them in Miss Justice. They're like a Canadian icon band, so yeah. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> when I was learning that song, uh, Dance the Night Away, there's one part where he does those tap harmonics. Like, you know, you go octave up and just touch the, instead yeah. of tapping like that, it's just the octave itself. And a guy was teaching me how to play it. And like the rhythm is like. But then when you do the, the harmonics in the middle, you have to take your finger and you tap on the harmonic. It's like. It's hard to do without your amp really loud. But the guy was teaching me, and what you do is you do your fingers on the fret, but then you go an octave higher and just tap right on the wire itself. So, like, that's cool. And it was hard to get the technique, and I'll never forget it. You know what the advice he gave me? What was that? He said, just pretend that you're trying to get, you're trying to flick some snot off your finger all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, and it's the only awesome. way it ever stuck in my head how to do it properly so every <laughs> time i do that i keep thinking of this thing on my fingers <laughs> <laughs> so it was good advice it worked but <laughs> some of those memories you you make from from different people like when they tell you when you get advice like that stick with you for so long 
And it, it's true. Like it was because I couldn't get it. No matter what I did, I never knew how to put my face. Like, you know, it's it's one of those things you look and you go, oh, that's pretty simple, but you can't get your, your hand to go where it wants. Yeah. But yeah, after you said that, it made perfect sense. Just always do that little light yeah. <laughs> shake. Wow. So there's your guitar tech for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> now you know how to practice it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Vito Brada from White Line uses it, that all the time. And his chords, like you see, if you go here, and you go. And you just, that, that actually sounded pretty good. Well, I can't, I'm not good at doing it because I haven't done it in a while, but in the chorus of the song Dance the Night Away, it's like if you pick it, it would be. But the way he plays it is that way, and it's like uh, super hard, but. Uh, see, I can't even do it. I find I, I can't get the hang of it that much. So, but he literally does that on stage while he's playing it, like d d d d d d d d, and the whole time he's just flicking the top of the strings like that. And you have to be dead set on the wire. If you're one millimeter over or back, it doesn't work. So, if, if you think he's an old hack and he's past his prime and stuff like that, just watch him play that live once. And you know. I'm lucky I play a, play an instrument where I pretty much hit it wherever I want to. <laughs> you, you guys are so comfortable with the guitar. I'm kind of like, kind of throwing it down. That's simple. Well, with the, as Nathan knows, even with acoustic drumsticks, though, there you got a lot of space to work, but a lot of space to break sticks very quickly if you're not careful. Oh, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Remember the remember when I showed you the picture of my concert, the very first one we did? Mm -hmm. yeah. They gave us a surprise and they hooked strobe lights under my drums. Oh, cool. <laughs> wow. And back in the day, to help me relax, I used to have things that I don't touch anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and I was very, 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 very relaxed. <laughs> and they didn't tell me about the strobe. So when I got on, I was doing my sound check. You know, you'd always like every drummer to show off and be an idiot. I had to yeah. bounce my stick and catch it. And I bounced it off the skin, and when I looked up, they hit the strobe light, and the stick <laughs> come down and got me right over the eye here. Oh my god! So they gave us free beer because we're sponsored by Labatt, and I was drinking one with another one over my eye, trying to keep the swelling down before we went on. So <laughs> oh, wow. that 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 before I quit drinking, that was my favorite beer, Labatt Blue, man. This stuff's so good. Are you serious? Yeah, I love that stuff. Oh my god! Yeah, because it's available a good bit in the states, right? Yeah. Well, on, or in Canadian Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Canadian Walmart definitely. It's there. <laughs> That's why. <right. laughs> you know, I had to pay. I had to play a huge tariff on that. That like, <laughs> <laughs> for my six pack of beer, it was like two hundred bucks when I got done. <laughs> we still tell that story, by the way. We still talk. Oh man. I'm so, I was so ignorant about international border crossings that I just kind of like, you know, whatever. Oh, yeah, and I stopped at Tim Hortons, too. That was the funniest thing. I went to Walmart, and I stopped at Tim Hortons. And and the, <laughs> the cop was like, you actually you actually came to Canada to Walmart and get a donut. <laughs> <laughs> True American cash would be completely ignorant. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, what I do? <clears throat> Okay, I got a, I got a song for the chat. Okay. Love song. See if they can figure it out. <laughs> All right, screwed it up. Yeah, I know. That's what I was thinking. Did you Federation or something? It sounds like the Russian anthem. Yeah. Is it? Oh, maybe it is. That's not where I heard it. <laughs> I like <Hey>. that <laughs> Such a good answer. That's not where I heard it. <laughs> what is it? Well, I wanted to see if the chat got it, but it doesn't look like it. It's the Tetris theme song. 
Well, oh, yeah, yeah. that's Whoa, Russian based. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Oh, yeah. Rush, Tetris was a Russian. So that is it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There you go. Yeah, no, why and you leave just because of my relation to that. That's why I'm like, yeah, it's not even put together with Tetris, but that's it right. It all makes sense now. Yeah. <laughs> when we were in Latvia, the I think the last, no, the second last time, because we were alone, I think maybe when we got married, there's some very cool bars there. One of them is an underground bar, uh, bunker from World War II, and you walk away down, <coughs> and it's this, like, semi-circle building about i don't forget how far underground almost like and it's all brick and it's a long narrow narrow building which was of course it was an actual bunker but now it's used as a bar and the bars there they stay open till six in the morning and we were there like in the dead of night and there's this guy singing and he has these crazy ass dreads he's a true punk you guys would go crazy for him and he sings all in latvian and he was famous during the 80s for singing anti-russian protest songs well cool. You know, the KGB was after him the whole nine yards, and now he's still like kind of a freedom singer, a folk hero. And we met him after the show, and uh, we were talking to him, and, you know, I wanted to say something nice. And I said, uh, you know, I really love your show and that. I like what I like your music. And one thing is universal with all musicians over the world, and he proved it to me at that moment. He goes, great, then, buy CD. <laughs> <laughs> It cost me seven euros. Best ever. Hey, wow, you made it. We have I a did it. guest coming in. You made it. All Ooh. right. Uh, you want to introduce yourself yes. to everybody? Sure. Okay. I'm, am I cutting someone off here? Or? Now he's still like kind of a freedom uh, no, you're good. You guys could just got to mute the live stream that you're watching. Yeah. Not the one that you are on, uh, uh, signed in, but the one that you're watching, uh, push mute on that one so it doesn't echo. And one thing is universal with all music. Oh, I think I've got uh, some background stuff going on here. Yeah, it, it, yeah. If you have the if you have the live stream on, you got to mute it. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Sorry, guys. No problem. I know, I know where I am. <laughs> oh man. Don't worry. Hey, keep about talking. It. Keep talking for a sec. <laughs> Oh, good. The price is on now. Rick, I'm trying to find an icon uh, to put, uh, I don't know, how would I put the box in the, in the chat? <laughs> I found okay. the drum on the guitar. Well, uh, you know, it, just just throw the drum thing in there, too. I got that in here, too. Yeah, exactly. He counts underneath it. Okay, we'll put the drum in, <laughs> we all had dead air. So. Okay. Am I still on this thing, or? Yes, you are. We hear you. Okay. No I think. I'm okay if I can't see myself anymore. That's fine. I. We can see you, so don't worry. About you look it. good. Okay, yeah. Cool. How's everyone doing? Joe, Joe's there. All right, buddy. Yeah, doing good. So good you could join us. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. I'm glad I figured this out. You want to exp uh, tell everybody about you, about your channel, your, your name? Sure, yeah. My channel is called Brother Dunn, and um, I love music, too. I love 90s music. Um, our channel doesn't really focus on that, though. Our focus is more on um, kind of family content and, like, family vacations and just the way that my brother and I can communicate with each other. My brother lives in Vancouver, so um, I don't get to see him too often, so that's why we have the name Brother Dunn. It's just a way that we can share our lives with each other through YouTube. Because we've been at it for like six or seven years, it's not something that we started a year ago. So um, since we've been at it for a long time, we really didn't have a, like a, a channel idea. It was just a way of communicating with each other. But how cool is that though? 
And you got a great channel. I love your. I found you know, one of you were one of the first ones too. I think that I came across when I started building up and uh, great content. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yours is uh, like when we started. We, we didn't really like back in the old days. We didn't care about numbers or anything like that. It was just to make videos. So um, when we started connecting with other channels, your channel was definitely one of the first ones that we connected with and um, kind of discovered this I am creator thing that was going on. It's worked out pretty well for you too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to meet a lot of cool people out there, and um, we definitely enjoy um, the relationships that are stronger, where people are communicating better and like sharing different ideas. Especially when we get into like uh, camera talk and gear talk and stuff like that. Those are the kind of channels that we connect with best. It's so cool. It's amazing, eh? How it opens up everybody, to, you know, to a new world almost. Yeah, big time. We got to meet a lot of cool people that we we would never have met um, if it wasn't for this whole like get a thousand sub thing going on. Yeah, yeah. It, it, there's always a blessing inside the curse. I say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think Xen is bringing your channel up right now. She's just showing everybody. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I can't see anything right now, but that's good. <laughs> Neither can I. Whereas we had to switch computer size tonight, and I, I never felt so out of my element. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's totally different. Yeah, I wore my, uh, I wore my Canadian dinner jacket though for everyone today. <laughs> nice. I, I, should, I should have worn mine. I'm the only I'm the only guy from the United States on the whole panel. Oh, are you nice? <laughs> big stuff. Where Where in the states are you from? Uh, I, I'm original. My my original uh, where I grew up in the Long Beach, the Los Angeles area, Long Beach specifically. You know, Sublime and all that stuff. Yeah, 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 awesome. And then, and then um, I moved to Iowa in 2005. I, I was I'd been here previously, but I came here in 2005. And then in the Midwest, and I I live in a little small town. It's so much different than LA that it's ridiculous, but I love it. <laughs> okay. So I I love the small town living. It's great. Yeah, yeah. So we you know what that small. means. It means if we start a band, you're coming to us. <laughs> if, if you guys want, if you guys want to sponsor my citizenship in Canada, I, Brooke and I will gladly come. <laughs> uh, I'm worried about I'm worried about Brooke. You can't have a criminal past when you come here. Then. Uh, she has a criminal past. Oh. <laughs> oh, poor, my poor my. Brooke. Poor Brooke. And we love She's her. Not to even pieces. here to defend herself. I know. I know. And you're talking. <laughs> Talking about criminal past. <laughs> she's the she's the greatest sweetheart you'll ever meet. We're just oh, teasing. Yeah. Here, here she comes. Oh god. Okay, I'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be good. <laughs> that, one uh, murder, that, that, that one murder doesn't oh, count. Yeah. <laughs> Brooke, Brooke, if you didn't know, you guys are moving to Canada. Yeah, that's what, what we were just discussing. We were forming a band. And we're moving to Canada. Yeah. Can we call it free beer? Why not? <laughs> I want to name my band Free Beer. When in, when in Rome. <laughs> I'll be mad. There's no free we, beer. Fr free beer, free wings. We could play Buffalo. Oh, yes. <laughs> I, I like it. So where did you get a pen, guys? From? Uh, Rizzo, uh, you're from Vancouver. Okay. No, he's from yeah. Alberta. He's in Alberta. He's in Alberta. Okay. I'm in okay. yeah. from Vancouver. Yes, from Vancouver in Alberta. Yeah. Nathan, where are you from? I'm a, I'm from the United States. From which oh. uh, which uh, which city or is it our, our state? California. Oh. Awesome. Okay, cool. Nice cool. California, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so you're not guys. You're not the only one. See. I I made a, made a huge mistake there. That's, but we're still in majority, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. Canada doesn't get to say that very often, so we're going to relish that one. Uh, California and Canada are both pretty liberal areas, so that's pretty cool. And that's they're the same terrible. population. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh my and God. Uh, um, uh, where are you from now? You said your bro brother is in Vancouver, and where are you? So I'm in a city called Sault Ste. Marie. It's in uh, northern Ontario. Um, it's on the border of Michigan. Yes. So we're actually our closest big city is actually Detroit. It's about a five-hour drive for us. Oh, cool! Oh, awesome. Yeah. We, we were in Sault Ste. Marie two years ago with the kids. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, we went on a trip to Great Lakes and. Uh, uh, First of all, we went to see a friend for the weekend in Colburg and thought maybe yeah. we'd go see my cousin in Hanover yeah. by Lake Huron. <laughs> Okay. And 
we ended up going all the way to see my uncle in uh, Atacokan in Western Ontario. Okay, that that's cool because I went to school in Thunder Bay, so oh. I, used to, I used to tree plant in Atacokan, so I've been to Atacokan too. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. That's the place that not everybody gets to say they. I'm sure we can find. <laughs> no, 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 for sure. <laughs> and from there we went all we because we went up uh, like we went across Lake Huron by the ferry and then went to Sault Ste. Marie. Then went over to Thunder Bay, out of Coken, and then we came all the way around and went to my cousins in Sudbury, and then down to Ottawa. So literally, a weekend trip turned into seven days. So. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, we we spent a ton of time on Lake Superior. So it's beautiful there. Yeah, it's it's awesome, and it, it's remote too. So uh, you could go out there and have camping areas to yourself, and just yeah, there's waterfalls everywhere and lakes and inland lakes and not only the big lake, but there's so much else else there too, which is kind of cool. Same as Western Ontario, when you head towards like from Thunder Bay to um, the Manitoba border, there's like a trillion lakes there, and you think there's probably people that never even got into some of them. They're these ancient. It almost looks like something out of Jurassic Park because you got that real Canadian Shield, dark ground, heavy tree. You know. Yeah. I, I, I love all that area. You definitely get into some lakes where you, it feels totally isolated. And you know, you just think there's nothing to the north of me, really. Like, there's yeah. no city to the north of me. I have this whole lake to myself. We do a lot of speck fishing in the spring, so we're waiting for the snow and ice to melt here. But uh, we get into some lakes where we know that very few, if any, people have ever made it to, and it's, it's fun. It's incredible feeling, eh? I bet. Oh, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, it's just fun to take your canoe in and whip it into the bush and then get somewhere where you know no one else has been before and enjoy it. That's, we have such a vast country and so little that's occupied. It's quite, you know, compared to a lot of other countries, we're one of the few that actually have so much of that untouched, tame, untamed land there to go to, to venture through. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I know you have a guitar there beside you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I always, is this what you guys are talking about? Are you talking about me or? Yes. Yeah, I always have a, an acoustic guitar down here. This is like kind of the room where I, I'm i furthest away from the kids when they're sleeping, so it's like a place where I can uh, pick up the guitar and strum. Well, that's okay. That's great. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> that's a big plus right there. You get a bit of downtime to yourself and I'm not disturbing anybody, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, like I, I've heard people talk about this on the show before where they had like expensive acoustic guitars and um, – I've actually gone to a cheaper one myself. I used to have a really expensive acoustic guitar and I got my first dent in it and I was like, why do I have this thing? I don't I don't want to have it in a special case. I don't want to have a humidifier for it. Mm -hmm. I just want a guitar that I could just chuck around. So yep. I picked up a like it's it's a good sounding one. It's a couple hundred dollar Yamaha, but it does the job perfectly and I don't care if it gets dented or Yamaha has that nice kind of brightish tone to it. And yeah, I find they really yeah. fill out that range of guitar nicely for acoustics. They're they're general purpose. They're like a workhorse guitar. You can take it backpacking, doing all these things. Yeah, and that's exactly what I do with it. Yeah, it's perfect for me. Yeah, Yamaha drums are a they're beasts too. They oh, yeah. fill up for pretty much anything. That's why you see a lot of marching drum bugle cords using them because they last. You know, oh yeah. Abuse and abuse and more abuse, and they just keep going. It's amazing. Whether you want an outboard motor or you want drums or you want a piano or whatever, your Yamaha is always in the mix. Or right. <laughs> That's true. Nathan, maybe you can uh, get an input about uh, drums. Yeah. What, what, what are your make your uh, acoustic drums? What brand are they? Um, they are um, Ludwig. Um, oh, the old classic. Oh, yeah. Ludwig's are beautiful. That's nice. Yeah, and yes, Sabian, Zigian, and yes, mostly like that. Did you know that Sabian and Zildjian were two brothers that created those? Yeah, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> and Zildjian, uh, Bob Zildjian, who created Sabian, he's in a little town in, of all places, Meductic, New Brunswick. And that's mm. where Sabian symbols are made. And you'd never think it. It looks like a sugar shack when you pass by it. A big one, yeah. but... It's right buried in the woods. It's, you would never think there was one of the greatest symbol manufacturers in the world planted there. I prefer Sabian. I wonder what that place sounds like. <laughs> it's loud. <laughs> I've been there. It's loud. I can. It's exactly <laughs> what you think. <laughs> it's a migraine waiting to happen. To be honest, my <laughs> I, I think I think the uh, symbol room at like music stores is a bad place to be. I can't imagine being in a, 
a manufacturer of symbols. Oh, especially that <laughs> the hand hammered ones are insane. Oh, oh yeah. But it, it's it's quite a process. I mean, it's an art form all on its own. It's a brass worker. Right. And saving is made from the initials. He took the first two initials of each of his children's name, and that's how he created the name Zildjian. Uh, Sabian, excuse me. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, hey, there's a Suzy channel. That, uh, we just subscribed to them. They have a good channel out there. Just noticing them in the stream there. I Just don't watch it when you're hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm wondering if Joe's ever been to the Sioux before. I saw him post something about Sioux St. Marie there. I didn't quite catch it. Yeah, he said uh, it was. A, it is a great place. It's a beautiful place, he was saying. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah it definitely is. Like, if you could get past the steel, steel mill and actually get outside the city, that's, like, to me, where the city starts. Yes, definitely. Yeah, we enjoyed a lot to the travel through there, uh, definitely. We'll go probably back again this summer, <laughs> somewhere that way. Right on. It's a lot um, of gas bay. The Canadian, well, not the Canadian Shield, but you guys have a different mountain range there. Oh yes, definitely, it's it's different for sure. But we're kind of right in the middle in Montreal, so we can go either way. <laughs> oh yeah, where you guys First are. Time. Uh, okay, everybody's on their phones, on the chat. So guys, if you want to ask a question. Uh, hit yeah. the chat room and ask a question to our guests because they're checking it out right now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I in the whole time, DJ froze, but it's just some... uh, DJ Creamy needs to leave right now, but thank you for uh, joining us. That was amazing. Uh, Reese's Mill Off Road Adventure is still with us yeah. and actively supporting everybody. By the way, Thank you for telling us uh, uh, that our channel got 1,250. Oh, nice. thank you. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Thank you. Aok and Foraging and Adventures got over their uh, aim as well. Uh, so congratulations. Now, did we get... Uh, Rick, over 500. If, he, if we haven't yet, we can do it. Anybody who haven't uh, subscribed and supported Rick from the Corn Life Network channel, I don't. Do I that. I'm just dropping the link there. right there. Beautiful. Uh, and now smash we have that button. like button. Yeah, and smash that like button. Uh, we have a question from uh, Joey. I would assume it's for Nathan. Did you learn the drums on your own or did you take lessons? And I can't see Nathan there, so we'll have to postpone the question. Uh, James is still there. Yes, James. Uh, okay, and you have 400. So exciting. Three Star Travelers almost have 400. You guys are amazing, supporting each other and going and checking each other out. That's so great. Um, let's see who else is here. Uh, let's see who's in the chat room. Um, hmm. Yeah, well, James. James is talking, so uh, I'm going to just announce it once so everybody knows that Friday is our... I'm creator live marathon from 3 to uh, 11 p.m. Eastern. Uh, very much the same way as it was uh, almost two weeks ago, uh, hopefully without any technical difficulties. So uh, if you want to check that out, uh, go over to James's channel, um, hit that bell button, and um, watch it on Friday from 3 to 11 p.m. There you go, James. <laughs> Now, Nathan, you, uh, we had a question for you, so we're waiting for you to come back. Uh, Joey was asking uh, if you learned to play drums uh, by lesson or on your own? Um, By my own. I never had drum lessons. I, I just did by myself, you know. Wow. And how long yeah. did it take for you to, like, be confident in, in that you can play? Um, Where I started playing... The snail first, and then I started, and then the, you know, like, and then then suddenly I know everything, you know, it's like step by step, you know. Maybe we should have our newest guest play something. Yeah, that's amazing, though. Yeah. Um, thank you for the question, Joey. 
Matthias, uh, would you play uh, guitar? Um, yeah, I guess I'll, I could play something. Um, sure. Like, uh, I'm always constantly working on different stuff or different tunes. Um, so this is something that I was just kind of working on right now. It's just a simple slide thing, but... <laughs> goes like that just a little tiny riff that i'm just trying to work out right now that'd be like the kind of newest thing that i'm working on right now oh we would love yeah we, go we ahead you're just start. more i just Jeez. started enjoying it all right on. <laughs> but i've got like i've got other riffs that i've gotten to go to so it's like um like just working on different riffs and waiting for that day when the kids get older so I can escape and uh, be with my friends again. Well, we'll be looking forward to you when you're 75, my friend. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think you got to make the magic happen right now. It sounds great, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right on. Hmm. Yeah, we'll just, uh, yeah, I'll go to Razor. Um, yeah, we were speaking about, about punk bands earlier, and I was wondering if anyone heard of uh, that famous Montreal punk band from the 80s and 90s called The Rip Chords. No. No? no. Never heard of The Rip Chords. Oh, they used to tour around. They, they used to stop in the Sioux when I was in high school all the time. and They're they're pretty big, too. Like I, I heard people talking about Deagle abortion and stuff like that. They're, yes. Uh, I remember them very well. I'm trying to see. I wasn't. I was more, I guess, a metal rock guy. But then there was those okay. kind of crossover bands, and that's where I think I came, came into MOD and Big Low Abortions. Right. Uh, like another band, a big one that I loved from the '80s was uh, Overkill, and they were that kind of metal punk scene out of New York when most of the stuff was coming out of LA, and so and the Ramones and stuff like that. So there was always that bit of overlap, but I wouldn't say I was fully into punk. But, right, right, right. But we, yeah, we learned how to play a Ramon song a couple of years ago, Poison Heart, which is a song that I like a lot. It's like one of their probably lesser known songs, but it's a good tune. It, uh, I, I, can't... I like the uh, Pet Cemetery one. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one too, yeah. Ramones. I love seeing somebody like Nathan here, younger and knowing these bands. I think that's so amazing. Yeah, I love classic walk a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it gives me hope for the future. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, the class, you, you, you've got to stick to our roots and um, you've got to kind of know where this came from. I mean, and, and it's all, you know, if you start looking back at music in the, in the past, you start to look at those, um, those, those blues guys that came out of jazz and then um, blues and then rhythm and blues. And then, you know, you, that developed into hip hop and, um, you know, just the rock and roll sounds from the blues and, and the country western scene, and you just get it just enveloped the world of music. And I, I definitely, it, yeah, I, you got uh, you got Robert Johnson, uh, one of the original uh, yes. players who yeah. probably started it all off. Yeah, right. amazing, amazing musician. That's, yeah, yeah, this stuff's awesome. Oh, those guys, I mean, those legends, uh. One of my personal favorites for a guitar will always be Stevie Ray Vaughan. I, oh, uh, yeah. What a tragic yeah. accident that was. I mean, that's um, feeling times 100 with that guy. And you know, do you know I, that guy's like used heavy gauge strings? Like his bottom string was like a 12. Wow. It's like cable that, and he could do those double bends as quick as anything. Like, that's why he had such a good sound on stage, you know? Yeah, you know, just think, I, I mean, this is a, this is just a statement kind of for discussion, but. 
what would have what where would guitar be guitar playing be today if Jimi Hendrix had, stayed, had lived? Mm -hmm. I mean, just imagine. I mean, he he really did come up with mo a lot of the modern stuff when Quitman was crap. Oh, of course. Imagine playing on today's musician to play today's musical instruments. Yeah, Jimmy's, Jimmy's talent. I mean, it would be amazing. Oh, like his influence even on live show performances was insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. way beyond his time, way beyond his yeah. years. You know, and a lot of those guys like that at the time. You know, uh, Pete Townsend and all those guys. Uh, Tommy Iommi from Black Sabbath. They were the sound they had was so far advanced from what everybody else was doing. I mean, they were truly were forefront guys. Yeah. But you know, I like the drum drumming from the seventies. Now I'm not familiar with too many of the drummers, but the sound of, drums had this like kind of really cool flop sound to them. Yeah. This deep. Yeah. Yeah. And now, now you've got everything kind of pitched up a little bit. I love to hear someone who's tuned down these really big, really big toms and yeah. deep toms, and um, like a, a big snare drum. We're not talking only these little fourteen inches, like a fifteen inch gigantic snare drum that puts out this huge bang sound. I like, just... like in the the funk scene, you know. I think of yeah. Stevie Wonder, Superstition, and all that when the oh. drums kick in. I. They're thunderous. It's the only time you can ever you truly use that word, thunderous right. sound. Right. I just I, I miss those days. And I think I think a lot of people are getting back to that now. I think you see um like a lot of the rock bands are tuning down their drums a little bit, which is good. Yep. Yeah, because in the eighties they got pretty tinny by times. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they were all playing those Remo, those Remo pin yeah. strikes for a long time. So they kind of that's kind of a a tinny little Ting, ting. You used to literally hear a ting when you would hit them. They're even in the yep. center. You know, they right. had that signature sound. And they had those drum sets that took up the whole stage back then, too. Yep. Yeah. Well, now, it was crazy about electronics now is um, I, I see, you know, you could sit there with a, uh, a five-piece kit with a double bass pedal and a little pad that has a thousand sounds programmed into it, plug into it, and it's so sensitive. You can't, I mean, you know, you know, Neil Peart had this big gong behind him. Yeah. Now it's electronic and he just goes wong. Yep. It's huge sound. You can trigger it. Like Nathan, uh, Nathan, do you use triggers on your electric drums? Yeah. Yeah, that's I figured I, that's the nice to me, electric drums is what made drummers feel really creative for the first time. Agreed. You know, you really got to think a little more out of the box. And really we all got this thing here. Power. Uh oh. this is a trigger. And uh, it's uh, it's it, this is for like triggers and stuff. Yeah. But this is um, it's like Wi-Fi too, so it's oh, and it cool. lights up and it has a gyro. So if you you move it a certain way, it, you can manipulate the sound. Oh, that's cool. And, and then uh, wow, pretty cool stuff. Hmm. One thing one thing I like about electric drums is uh, yeah, like now that I'm a dad, it's like one of the only ways that we can actually jam. So it's it's kind of weird now. We'll go into my brother's basement and we all have earphones on, and he'll play the electric drums, and we'll sit there and play guitar, and we'll actually get a jam in while the kids are still sleeping upstairs. So it allows that, for that, that is so cool. That's the good thing of technology them. today, right there in the proof. Yeah, I yeah. Want, exactly. I want to get electric drums now for sure. I, I'm getting it. I'm kind of looking at this, and it might be the time to do it because it's they've come down in price a lot. Yeah, they have, and they're they're the sounds are amazing out of them. And the control you can play any time. You know that's what right. sucked when I only had acoustics was the, the limit of time. You know that you can play. Nathan, what do you think about acoustic versus electric drums? Where electric drums still more like quieter, but like acoustic drum is more loud. You know. Do you like the feel of it though, the acoustic more? Or? Um, I love the acoustic, but where the electric, like, where it's very hard to decide because like both of them, they're, they're the very type, the same type, you know. Right. It's just the feel. As I find, there's a bit more of a feel. I like electronic drums. That was the only thing I noticed. Sometimes was just the feel of the acoustic was a little more. Uh, yeah. You know, you, you feel it a bit more. Like, you know, it's more reactive, I guess, is the term I'm looking for. Uh, Brooke oh, yeah, is not it's telling me about electric drums. <laughs> but you can uh, put the headphones on so nobody can hear it, actually. 
Yeah, <laughs> it's true. It is yeah, a plus. So to it's it. actually out of two, you would rather have electric. <laughs> we we owe a lot to uh, what's his name, the drummer for Def Leppard. Yeah, I mean, he oh, sped up that technology by at least ten years for his needs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, the only one arm, and the, 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 if anybody doesn't know that, and uh, he had the crash just before they had their biggest album of all time. And uh, they thought he would never play drums again, and that's when they started pushing this technology. So <laughs> it's an all it's in the black. You must have heard that joke before. What has nine arms and sucks? Def Leppard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been a big Def Leppard fan. I don't hate them that much or anything. I found that one was a little cruel, but <laughs> I didn't say I do not support the joke in any shape or form. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 these, statement, these statements are my own and not my employer. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Just tell them where to send the complaints. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, he definitely, it was amazing. You know, it saved the guy's career that time. It did. He was a young man, too. He was only 21 when it happened, he was just a yeah. kid. That's it's interesting what ha happens when people have adversity in any situation. You just yep. learn to adapt. He did it rather quickly, though. I mean, he really yep. went from from not ha to, from being having arms to playing. In I mean, it wasn't very much time. Yeah. I mean, he, he figured that whole thing out with his foot pedals and stuff, and it was done. Plus, plus went through a traumatic accident all as well. Right. And you he know? still managed to come out and play live. What a year later? I don't know how long that was, but it I wasn't mean, that long. It was pretty. Yeah. Pretty cool. It's, it's it's definitely there's a lot of inspiring stories. So, so anybody hey, else, guys? Oh, well, go ahead. Uh, I'm gonna take off. I think my internet's slowly draining. Oh, so yeah. maybe we could do like a round. Uh, yep. Just, uh, of the last riff. Yeah. <laughs> do a last riff, and we'll do a round. And yeah. So you okay, want to well, play the last before you go? Oh, uh, which which song? Uh, I can't turn that down. I'll just here. I'll do a bunch of soloing for you. I'll tell my uncle. Huh? Yeah. My well. uncle used to. Ask, I used to say to them. He used to ask for a song all the time. He'd tell me to play a solo, solo that I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Resorian, I so love you. I love your style. I just love I love the I love your channel. I like the way I love your just your style as you are. You're a real pleasure. <laughs> Oh, thank you. I, I am so honored to be on this sh uh, show with you. Oh, God, it's our pleasure. Yeah, thank yeah. you so much for uh, coming to our live yeah. stream. That was amazing, uh, and I hope, we hope that we can have you on again sometime. For sure, yeah. I don't want to have a huge long I just come on again sooner. Perfect. Well, <laughs> yeah. We're definitely going to have you back on, and we'll have to have a feature with you, okay? All right. Sounds good. Thank you so much for coming um, tonight. It's really been a pleasure. Any final? How do you close this down? <laughs> I'll we'll close it for you. Oh, you I, oh yeah. I guess, you well, you know what? You know what? I I just want to thank everyone who's watching. You know, and uh, appreciate that as well. And uh, and all you guys in the, the that are in the live stream as well. Uh, it's really nice to talk to you guys. Yeah, yeah. This is the very first time I've done anything like this. So yeah. Um, but. I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna take off because I, I'm getting like two frames per second. <laughs> no, I <laughs> okay. We really appreciate. It. We'll talk soon. Okay. Perfect. See you later. All right. Bye. Have a good See one. Man. Thank you. Bye. Bye now. Okay. There we go. So. Um. Yeah. Should we do a riff or two? Yep. Who wants to go first? Well, I'm, I'm gonna play some marching snare stuff just because I. It's sitting in front of me now, and I've got sticks in my hand, so I'll do that. Run it, my friend. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Nice. Man, you really kept up your chops for it. Good job. I still play it. I I, I bought I, I, I uh I found a really good practice pad out of California. It's called Zymox Percussion. And it feels like uh, what I used to play on with the Kevlar heads. And um, it, it's the first practice pad that I've actually really enjoyed playing. It took almost three months for it to arrive because it was custom made. But uh, it was well worth it. 130 bucks, best 130 bucks ever spent on this. Excellent. And that's nice, like you say, for busking and that, you know, you get to practice plus make some money at the same time. It's a win-win. Exactly. You know, that's a misconception a lot of people might have is they think when they see busking, it's like, oh, I'm just doing it because I need change. But a lot of very good musicians do it because it's yep. a great way to keep up their skills and make some money. Yeah. In uh, Montreal here, I don't know if you know that, but it's fully unionized for the buskers. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's they pay. Awesome. They pay. Yeah, they pay. I think it's something like a hundred bucks a year or something like that. Yeah. And there's controlled spots and times and they literally fit into each one of them. And you have like the center square and you had to audition up until this year. Now you have to submit a, like a, a, a recorded music and you have to have a voucher for you unless you play with a recognized orchestra or something, then you're, you're cleared automatically. That's really cool. Uh, we, we, I, in Des Moines, I have to purchase a permit every year. That's $25. And it's the best twenty five dollars I spend every year. I mean, it. It. I. I can go out and you know I play for a crowd of drunks mainly, and um, coming out of the bars, so they'll they'll pretty much groove to anything. Yeah. And and so I, I'm sitting there just kind of playing my thing in stupid old cadences. I play the same things over and over again, and people walk by and throw twenties in there, and you're just going like, oh man, you have just been ripped off because that was the worst I've ever played in my life. <laughs> And they love it. So, it, it, you know, it's, it's well, I, love, I love busking just because it's a performance venue. Well, that, that's pretty cool, though. Hey, good for you. It's a great way to keep up the chops, my friend. Yeah. There's Thanks. a there's a touring busking show from Montreal that actually tours across. Yes. The, and they stop by the Sioux every year in the summertime. That's cool. Do you know a little bit about them? Because I want to talk about them, but I can't remember much about it. I, yeah, I don't. I don't remember much. I know that there. It's just. It's more than uh, music busking. It's a whole bunch of street performance, and but there is music involved too. So there's and it's a group of people that come around. And they just take over a downtown area, and there's like hula hoop shows and fire. Awesome. And well, it's so like cool. every kind of form of street performance that you well, can imagine. Well, and that's they, how Circle Soleil started. Circle yeah, Soleil kind of the same street thing. performers. Yeah. So yeah. you never know where it can land. That's proof of it right there. Yeah, yeah. It's, so it's kind of neat to see how they go to like smaller cities that may not see that too often. Whereas exactly. if you live in bigger city like Montreal or Toronto, you mm -hmm. guys are used to that stuff. And they get better reception there for stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like the, our city closes down the whole downtown for it. And yeah. it's like a two or three day event. I used to do clinic, uh, drum and guitar clinics with artists. And Montreal and Toronto, Vancouver, Calgary had to beg them to do it. And you go to a smaller town like Sault Ste. Marie, and mm -hmm. we get radio spots. And, you know, the guy was taken care of, and they do all of the little extras and stuff. Right. You appreciate, you know, you appreciate it more. And it made, the guys walked out feeling 10 times better there than they ever did in the big cities. Right. 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 You know, it's a, it's a good energy. Everybody wants to feel like they're making a difference if they go through all that. Yeah, that's why it's kind of fun when like a bigger band will stop by in our city too, and because they have to play at a small venue when they come here, and they haven't done it. Some of them haven't done it for years, and it kind of brings them back to their roots. And you always hear some good positive comments about the show afterwards, which is kind of fun too. Well, yeah, they're feeding off you the energy. They're so much more closer to it, and you know, yeah, they're, they're right in front of you. Yeah, it's fun. That is, that is a great thing like that, uh, and the bands appreciate. It. You'll hear them talk about those concerts are probably some of the ones that mean they'll say for the TV the biggest shows. You know the fifty hundred thousand thing they did, but they really connect with those smaller shows. I think that's what fuels them. Yeah, yeah. I think Joel Plasquet has a song about playing here in the Sioux and some other small cities around Canada too, like Riviere de Loup. Yes, yes. My God, I don't hear that name very often. <laughs> we see it every time we drive home to my parents. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. We always go by the New Brunswick way, not the Quebec side, because the road is better. They just redid all the highway. Okay. 
So we go all the way through Edmonton to St. Leonard and then up to Camelton, New Brunswick, and then cut back over. Yeah, I think that's the way that we went when I headed down that way too. It's a it's a windy road. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's right along. What, what's that river it's along? Uh, the Rustigush. Yeah, yeah. Up further. Yeah, they, but they've cleaned it up. How long ago was it that you were there again? Uh, it was the 99, 2000. Oh, you wouldn't probably recognize it anymore. They did so much work to it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it'd be cool to go back and see it again. Yeah, well, it's time they had to do something because <laughs> it was getting pretty dangerous. A lot of yeah. the moose is getting hit and everything else. So. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, let's do the run for Nathan. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Grab it. Yo, hey, how are you? You're just sitting there yeah, so quietly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we were doing just a roundup, so uh, we would like to know if you would want to uh, get ready for the last uh, drum up. Okay. Perfect. Well, that will be where well, the fortunate. I cannot because I think because you know I have I have bad neighbors here because. Oh <laughs> no 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 no! no, no, no. no, no. Don't God. worry about it, <laughs> guys. You're gonna have to check out his videos after, okay? Yes. They're definitely <laughs> checking out. <laughs> that is no problem at all. Nathan, it's been so nice to have you on tonight. I'm really, I was worried you weren't going to be able to make it. So, because uh, I I love your videos and we've been talking back and forth chatting. So, I was really, really glad you got to make it here tonight. Yeah. Th thank you so much for inviting me here. You know, oh, no problem. And uh, we'll, we'll probably be doing this again. I think the, the, everybody enjoyed it a lot. Yeah. So, uh, hopefully, the next time we get on, that you'll be willing to come back. Um, yeah, sure. Oh, that's perfect. Well, listen, uh, do you have any last words for everybody? Well, uh, I guess um, guess that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Support Nathan Likes Drums. Yeah. Uh, I will be posting the links again. Uh, and it's amazing to have you. Yeah, it's been such a pleasure, Nathan. And you take care and keep in touch, okay? All right. See you guys. And see you later. Take care. Thanks for coming. There we go. So do we have a oh do we have a song from uh Mateus that you'd like to do for us? Um I uh let me think uh some spot here. Um well while you're thinking about it, I have to tell you that you have one of the best, and if you didn't see it, people, you gotta check it out. You have the best thousand sub video I've ever seen. Yeah. Oh right. I, I was so I mean I, I yes we're in it and I'm I'm we're beyond touch that you concluded us. But the yeah, way was, you did it, it was amazing. Yeah, we're, I'm, like we're huge uh, cross country skiers in our family, so uh, I I just figured I'd take the camera and see what I could remember and see who I could send a shout out to. And afterwards, when I finished it, there was a, probably about like ten or fifteen people that originally I planned on mentioning that didn't even come close to making. And I also had a couple where they were just just so brutally presented that I couldn't even throw it on the video. Oh. So, some people didn't even make in the video in the show just because I cut it out because it just didn't fit right and I didn't, couldn't spit out what I wanted to say. You didn't have them written down? You were doing that from memory? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just trying to get it down from memory. Oh, my God. Ten, like I skied 10K, so I had usually about 50 minutes to think about it. So I, I don't even know what to say. Yeah. I, I feel like I'm ready for an old home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was, but I, I did have like um, an idea, like I went through and I had an idea of, uh, like I made a list before I left um, within that week. So I have I went over it a couple of times just to see, oh. um, yeah, just to have it in my mind before I went out for the ski. I'm kind of shocked after you told me that. I don't even know if I heard the last part. I'm still trying to put my head together how you remembered all the, uh, my hat's off to you. That You did that improv? Like, hey. Yeah, yeah, I just I went for the ski and James says he makes, James said he makes maple syrup too. Exactly. Yeah. That maple oh, syrup coffee. Oh, we've boiled sap before, but I've never thought about putting it through an actual coffee machine. That was interesting. I was surprised actually we washed that together. I was surprised you did that. I'm like, oh my god, how did that end? <laughs> it was uh, it was actually kind of cool because I got a lot of cool feedback. Like I heard a lot of people um they're making like they roast their hot dogs in maple syrup sap and um yep. other people are making their tea with it and so it was kind of cool to see what other people were doing with the sap see in quebec well where i, where I grew up in gaspe there's a lot of maple syrup 
but they're more traditional style. Where Montreal, they have a, outside of Montreal towards Vermont, they have the more uh, touristy ones where you can go in and there they cook like you eat everything cooked in uh, sap or syrup. You have they can right. boil ham into it. They use it on the sauce for it. They uh, make all kinds of different uh, venison meats and put uh, sap or maple syrup into it and drinks with it, wine with it, the whole kit and caboodle. You yeah, all, the, the, the most interesting one was the, the person who boiled hot dogs and eggs, and I thought well, that was kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> it would be interesting to try. So, yeah, the, apparently, like when his he said when his dad used to boil it when they were kids, he would just take the hot dogs and throw it right into the sap while it was boiling down. And uh, cook that I haven't tried that one either. The no. eggs is the one I'm thinking about that keeps coming back. I don't. Uh, there's lots of support. Hey, Joey says, hands down, brother, uh, done such a good channel. Uh, they loved your video, the thousand video. Yeah. Susie channel loves it. Super cool video. Uh, so cool. Uh, your thousand sub video is so awesome. So people are loving it. A lot of us in the I creator movement, I think that one really touched us. Like it was, uh, it, it, uh, it, it, it has something special to it and not that people don't have great videos for that and I've seen some good, but that one had something very very special to it and uh, nice I'll dad, man, was, uh, Maybe it's just a combo of like getting out there and doing something that you like to do and then uh, And I like creating videos too. So maybe Thank it's you just for a combo of things that thank you for putting us with the electric guitar by the way that meant a lot I was happy about that <laughs> Yeah, 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 nice <laughs> I was, trying, I was trying to I was trying to do the flashes that you guys have in your some of your videos. I loved it. I got it right away, and I thought that was I, I was honestly I know it sounds corny. I was touched. I really was touched when I seen it. I called Xenia and she was in the kitchen. I'm like, you gotta come see this. Yeah. It was like seeing a newborn baby. Like I had to throw it off. So. <laughs> and another thing too that I like too is I like the way that um A Joe uses color so. I did yeah. a brutal job at throwing color in over his. I wanted to like get it dialed down, but my lighting was just so bad because it was a gray, like it was a gray day. It wasn't a blooper day, so when I went into um, post, I can't, I can't get the color that I wanted. Yeah, so but it looked cool. I, like, I knew right away when you were going with. Like, he's got his color dialed down. I like the color that. Yeah. He creates he in his post production Sepia kind of type there. You know, that's his. And you, know, I, I thought of it right away. I got that connection too. Like so. Oh, okay, like, cool. No, no. You really, you really got our personalities into it, and the way you would tie it into stuff. Oh, the way I do this, oh, the way I do that, and you bring up their names and stuff. It was a genius, really. Uh, that was you. just like that was just things coming to me too. Like when I uh, when I was talking about Robert Agree and his fishing, and that's so cool. Yeah, because I just watched one of his popper fishing shows, and the funny thing is, like, I, I would go on and talk about it after about the episode that I watched, but it just ended up being boring, so I just cut it all out. Well, I think a, 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 it really got to a lot of people, as you can see by everybody's comments and that. Great job. Really hats off to you. So do we get a song out of you before we go? Um, sure. Uh, I'm trying to think of, like, I, oh, I could try to butcher one. Then butcher away. I'm sure it's going to be great. I'm working on, I'm working on a couple songs right now just because um, – Every May long weekend, I get together with my old university buddies, and they we all get, we get together and play guitar on the fire and go fishing. So someone yep. wanted, wanted me to try to learn a um, uh, John Denver song. So oh, I don't even think I could pull it off, but I might as well work on it anyways. I thought we were working on fire. <laughs> another one they want me to learn too but I'm just trying I'm just trying to work it out um. oh, I can't get it yet. 
Traveling Wilburys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's I gotta get cool. it down next week. Well, that's cool though. No, great job on to it. Yeah. Right I'm on. so glad you got to come on. We we're I, I've been wanting to meet you for a while, so I'm really. I, I liked your channels right from the get go. I loved your intro. Remember, I, one of the things, first things I ever wrote was, "I love your intros." <laughs> we definitely yeah, yeah. will have to make it happen again uh, and have you on as our guest, uh, uh, same as uh, we had uh, Rick and Brooke uh, yeah. the other week. We would love to have you on. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, we can work that out. Yeah, would be great. Just keep in touch, and we'll figure something out. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Such a pleasure having you. I eh? thank yeah, you so much for coming on. Hope everyone has a good night. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Take care of yourself. <laughs> Bye now. Thanks for coming. Thank you. And then there was one. Then there was one. <laughs> the first and the last. That's right. <laughs> for I guess we'll start first. Do you want to give a little uh, a little tune before we? Oh yeah, I, I will never turn that down. Although I would. Always want to ask. So. And now, for everybody who's still there and not supporting Corn Life Network, go over and smash that button. He's only yes. eight away from 500. Oh, God. Uh, yeah. And I know everybody's already supporting. So, anybody new who hasn't been there yet, please go and smash that button. We can make it happen from all the private business <laughs> corporate no. accounts. Just smash it. <laughs> There will be no further programming until we reach that eight. That's right. <laughs> That's right. We're just gonna stare at the screen blankly. <laughs> well, I, the old time, old time uh, evangelists used to say that there will be no further programming until we reach the circle. I, I'm, I'm wrong. But let's try. so great well thank you Perfect. for having me on I, I i am so stoked to be able to like share my music with people and um this is the probably the uh most um diverse audience i've ever had and that's that's great all at one time it's so much fun thank you so much for doing this it's, i'd love to be a part of it again you know rick you know what i love most about you is that you are always a team player in the truest sense of the form that's right and I, I really truly respect that of you. And you've been like that at the beginning. I and I I love the way you do that. You open yourself up and you just get in with both feet. And it's really, really appreciated. And you're amazingly talented on the ball. I love it. I really Xenia, because she you. never heard it before. Yeah. I wish you could see her face like as you were playing. Because she didn't quite know what to expect. Not that she's expecting anything bad. She right. literally didn't know what to expect. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I was the same way with the clone when I found out. I'm like, whoa, I got to play this thing. And it's it's so much fun. And that's that's what I like about music. And there are so many people out there that get all aggro about their music. They just get so like, oh, I've got to be this. I've got to do that. I've got to do this. I've got to be this person. I've got to do this by that time. And I've never been that guy. So yeah. um, I, I'm i I'm just kind of a go the flow thing. And um, I I, that's that's kind of what makes me who I am. Just because I'm, I, I I try to be as easygoing and open as possible. So it, when I find something that I'm passionate about and I love, I do jump in with both feet. Yeah. With, with almost no regard for what's going else else is going around me, and sometimes it causes me problems. But most of the time, I find that it's appreciated because it's it's rare that people just go, okay, that I'm just going to do this. Yeah. Um, and you know, I love I love just. Go on, just go, just send it, you know. Well, it is, it shows in your character and it shows through your music. Thank you. And uh, no, I really meant that. I, and I, I do appreciate that. It, it's nice to, to have that kind of energy. Oh, it's thank you so much. And I'm so glad you could be on. Definitely, it's like I say, sometime we'll have to get you and Brooke back on for a follow up. That was really fun, too. It was. It was. I, I Brooke, Brooke and I would both love that. So just let us let us know when you'd like to do that, or we can host it on our channel this time. 
I was, yes. Why don't we try to set that up? That would be fun. That would be fun yeah. to do. We'll, yeah, we'll, do that. That, we'll do that. We'll set it up. Um, I will uh, send you a message and figure out what's working with Brooke, and we'll work that out. That would be nice. So let's do that. Yes. Let's, yeah. let's do that. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Um, I'm going to take off. I'm getting tired. Yeah, you're not the yeah. only one. We've literally fallen. <laughs> and like we always say, our daughter will be up at 5, 5.30 in the morning pulling out her eyes like this. So. Well, thanks for being a trooper. My God, that's three hours yeah. again. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so never ending at 10 anymore. This, 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 it's an unbelievable beast what the, the live streams are becoming. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. I, I have stuck to an hour. I, I refuse to go further than an hour by myself on a live stream for an hour. Is yeah, a lot of talking. Of course. Yes, it, it, it's then you feel like you're almost in the room talking to your, you know, like you can lose. Yeah, you, you, the neighbors think it's crazy sometimes. The UPS guy I was sitting here one time doing a morning show, and I'm sitting here talking, and he thought he says, and he knocked on the door, and I was like, hold on a minute, I got to go answer the get the UPS guy. And he says, he he he, he was all. He says, are you in there talking to yourself? I said, and I'm like, no, I'm like actually on a live stream on YouTube right now. And he looked at me like I was the craziest man on the planet. Because like, I'm all amped. I'm like getting crazy and having fun with it, with the chat. And he's like, is there anyone in here? <laughs> <laughs> Do you share the same UPS guy as Casey Neistat? Oh, gosh, I wish I did. I'd ask him for yeah, a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had the following numbers that his guy, that his UPS guy has. <laughs> I know. I that, That's that's crazy. He that that story is a pretty amazing book that's just the that's just the master the 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 thing about casey is that he's the minus touch when it comes to youtube yeah and his new business 368 will take off because people are really willing to pay him enough money exactly and it really is and we can't I, take it away from the guy i mean i mean i'm I, I watch him and i don't hate him and i mean i, I like his work but i'm not a fanboy of him no just that you can't i mean he did build himself up on youtube and i mean he right. made his breaks you can't take it away from the guy yeah i yeah. i i would prefer to be in the move in the movement of i am a creator the yep. the the uh it's grassroots it's yep. got no one no one really at the top controlling things yeah and um you know we we, we, we do this because we love it and and this this is how this live stream came together how my live streams come together yep um, you know and i i i, I can't wait till friday Yep, it's gonna be fun. It's yeah, it's gonna be a big night. <laughs> well, it's a big afternoon. That's a long live stream. Yep. So, guys, you make sure you eat your Weetabix Friday morning because you got a lot <laughs> of viewing Friday night. So, yeah, it um, was also last time. Uh, uh, despite all the difficulties, it was yeah. still so much fun. So, it's even uh, fun with the difficulties. Yeah. That's what makes it more interesting. Was, you know? Definitely Brooke looking forward. Brooke and I were on the way to St. Louis, and we weren't in an area. I was supposed to go on at I think it was eight o'clock our time. And yes. all of a sudden I realized to look on and I was going to, I was trying to get on and I had no cell service. Oh my. <laughs> Not at all. We were going to do it from the car and I never anticipated anywhere in the United States where I'd have no cell service, yes. but none, none. And, um, that I, I felt so bad, but Jim's like, don't worry about it. We'll do it again. And well, so, definitely. definitely. Well, Friday's the day. So exactly. If, if I, if Brooke is, Brooke is working that day, um, what else is going on? I think she's got something else to do that evening. Um, but I'll definitely be on on and off during the day if James allows it, and uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I know I'm going to participate. That's for sure. Perfect. Looking forward Sounds to see you, my friend. Yep. And it's going to be great. So, okay. Have a good night. Thank you. Very you take much care. For coming. Thank Bye. you so much for coming. Always a pleasure. Say hi to Brooke for us. Uh, we will. Good night. Bye, Bye now. Uh, well. <laughs> That was our manic money. Yep, three hours again. Three plus hours. I think we need to have an alarm or something. Um, you know, it's going to be a different what for format, right? Yeah, um, we'll have to go and check that out. Yes, uh, that I did on. It's going to be. I can't read, so my answer. Uh, M. Trunk, uh, hi, by the way. And uh, yes, as AJ was saying, you just jumped in right to the end of it, mm -hmm. but make sure and go and check out. There's lots of music playing, drums. Uh, Nathan Loves Drums was in. We had Rosario and Baca playing guitar. Brother Dunn was playing acoustic guitar. And of course, uh, Rick from Corn Life Network was yeah. uh, having. <laughs> 
his amazing box. <laughs> the, I'm going to call it the box. Yeah. And uh, Andrew was playing his electric guitar. So yeah. uh, for those of you who missed this live stream, get back and check it out. It was so much fun. Uh, we're going to do that again. Cards. I, I can read part of it. I'm so blind. Everyone, uh, yeah, you'll have to read Everyone it. was having so much fun. You lose tr track of time. That's so yeah. right. And that's <laughs> when it is the best. And yes, James, she's on the left tonight. It feels weird. I was using the example. It feels like when you I drive like a it car. Better here. I don't. <laughs> this is switching I back. It. I think I look better here. <laughs> you, you, you look... Yeah, I like the angle better here. <laughs> well, don't get so used we'll have to, to it. mirror it or something. <laughs> yeah. I want to be on this side. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh guys uh, we <laughs> hope that you had a good night uh, we definitely had it all uh had to repeat that again uh, yeah. and uh get some more people in playing uh different instruments um uh definitely yeah it was lots of fun she was uh, said it and i i just couldn't believe when she opened her mouth that night on <laughs> <laughs> on air and said to do this, but yeah, it turned out pretty good. Yeah, so. unfortunately, Neil from uh, Isles and Heathens uh, had a uh, um, prior uh, engagement, yeah, yeah. prior engagement, uh, unplanned prior engagement, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they couldn't make it tonight. Uh, uh, and and actually, that's uh, on on they were the guest mm. stream, uh, they were on our live stream as a guest, and that's where we came out with this idea because uh, Neil C and andrew couldn't stop talking about music although yeah. <laughs> that's not that wasn't the subject of our live stream yeah. so we decided that's where the idea came from to uh do manic uh, mondays so yeah. uh, i think it went great and we'll definitely have to do that again because we need neil to, to come and talk about music and yeah. uh, we still have other people coming on so we'll definitely repeat that and we're gonna make it known for uh everybody yeah. so uh keep creating yeah and have a good night thank you so much night. for coming Take love care. you all good Be night